I've only gone to yeah, Western Europe. Yeah, I know what I need to do. It's going to be different than my last super long flight. My last super long flight was a military charter, so it was like. I don't even know how many rows. There was at I mean, least so eight, much. but it was three sections. We had two aisles. It was one of those massively huge ones. So that was really comfortable. We had movies, we could sleep, walked around. And then I got switched. You will too. It'll be. Yeah, I got a What I might do to Germany from Chicago. And it was uh very no, like, yeah, yeah, but the rest and of the flight right. was on for India. So okay, now you can go and hours well, make sure and they're recording eight hours after this. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't get off the flight, sure. Like we got so, off on the oh. I was like, oh my goodness, that's a long flight. All right, and, bummer. Now I need to start this video. It's, like, it's crazy. But it's crazy. It's not 1.30 yet. Should we wait? Just go ahead and start. It's, 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 well, this is pretty minutes. much so, yeah. okay. 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 Where's the mouse? It disappeared. Oh, sorry. Yeah, make sure. Make sure. Her, my first, um, you, you might lose it on. Oh, I'm sorry. The external mouse. We're live. So I just need to get to the, I need to get to the um, KW uh, Ignite. Got it. They have the new one or the old one? 2.0. Two point which will be coming in and out of the computer when she comes. Got to get you the mouth. This whole system went downstairs or so entitled. That's why I bring it. Oh. That's why it's a mess right now. Okay, so you need. Right. KW. Go ahead and type in KW Ignite 2.0. Yeah, to find right. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 I don't know. Maybe I'll just be on the chair. Is that the new one or the old one? Teachers do. Uh, uh, a lot of the stuff looks the same, but the format's different. <laughs> do you want the old one or the new one? We'll go with this one. Okay. I mean, it's, I can't call it loosely anyway. Okay. So, do you need it on the screen? Um, yes. Okay. Well, that's a new one. Thank you. Sorry. It's okay. Huh? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Two and a half yeah. hours of sleep. Yeah. 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 This is yours, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're now on the Awesome. awesome. I could not. This is a different angle. Okay. Right. It really is. But yeah, it's really interesting. So, do we need to do anything else? Awesome. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm going to turn on some fans. Oh, thank you. Would you also cl close the front door so at least yeah, people can see out on you? Okay. I was just uh, hanging out. Oh, okay. I think it's too cold spot. It gets hot in here. Yeah. Because it runs, I told them it runs by the building. That thermostat doesn't taste. It's crazy green. So, one for you. I might have put one for me too. I, I can, you can do. My, my name is Beverly Fast Sinclair. I, yes, I was a fast woman for many years, but I'm gone um, much. And then I got married to Mr. Sinclair, and hence my name. So, so happy to be with you guys telling you about open houses. Um, to give you a little background on me and who I am and why I teach this class, I moved to India. I'm a native Texan. I met and married my husband when he was in the military and I was in grad school. And I moved to Indiana having never been here, never. The only two people I knew were Indiana, my mother-in-law and father-in-law that I met at my wedding. They are the only people I've ever met in Indianapolis or Indiana for that matter. So if I can get business, you guys can too, because I have no family, no college friends, no people I went to school with anything to help give me business. And I did it through open houses. 
It's one of the best ways to pick up buyers that there is out there. And is it if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to refer to this, but I'm not going to read every part of the manual point by point. You guys are welcome to do that, and I encourage you to do that later. But um, let me also say that I there are a lot of different ways to do open houses. I did them my first, well, my first few months, and I was getting no business. And an older agent at my previous company said, don't hand him anything. He told me, I'm going to tell you why. It's a different way of doing things. And that, and I'm the next, my first year in the business, my first full year, I was a rookie of the year for my entire company. It was a company like, like Tucker. There were multiple offices. And it was, I had 34 transactions and 33 for more open houses. So when I tell you open houses are a great way, I speak from experience. And that's how I built my business. Honestly, it was open houses. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, they don't work and they're not good and everything. Well, it depends on how you do them. There are people who do them very, very differently in our office who are also very successful. I'm going to be sharing with you the way I did it that worked for me. And there's certain things that I think are like, I don't hand anybody anything. I think that's one of the worst things you can do is hand somebody a flyer. Yeah. And I'll tell you why when we get there. So uh, fast forward, uh, when I sold my 1,000th home, and I think in 2008, I quit counting. I've done a lot of business. I'm one of the investor owners here. Um, I've been in business since 1991. And um, now I'm primarily doing investments. I have a bunch of rentals I've luckily paid off. And this is all the things I've learned from Keller Williams. I didn't learn any of this stuff in my other company. Nothing. You guys are so fortunate to be starting here if you're all new. I don't know if you're all new or somebody. You're not. <laughs> I know you're not. You're, you're a rock star. So um, anyway, that's a little bit about me. I'd love to go around and have you guys tell me a little bit about yourself so we can uh, get to know each other a little bit before we start class. Well, my name is Quinn McAllister. Still waiting on my license. So okay. I'm just now. I did my training without getting my license first, too. So <laughs> right. it, worked, it worked out okay for me. Right. <laughs> I'm also a barber full time on the barber shop and furniture store. Oh. I'm to incorporate. You are an entrepreneur. I love it. <laughs> Good. Well, welcome, Quinn. I know Miss Rachel. So I've been an agent for about three years. Um, I was recruited to Compass, which she knows, um, about a year ago. Finished up a whole year there and came back here because there really is no place like Kelly Williams. So family, family feeling and the training and the pressures constantly are good to have. Just as the market changes, you need to know how to. Absolutely. Uh, and Keller Williams, I will tell you, I was with a company, Graves and Tucker were the large independents when I started, and I was with Graves. And um, and then I went to Century 21 Sheets. Hi, come in, welcome. And Nobody has a training Keller Williams does. Nobody. I got downright mad when I got to Keller Williams when I was checking out the company to, to start it with my partners. We're, there were 12 of us that started this office and I was the mega agent in the group. And I got downright mad at stuff. It's like, I've been in this business almost 20 years and nobody's told me this. It made me downright mad. And it's like, why wouldn't they tell me this? It's like, oh, because then they, I'm more malleable. I'm more controllable. I'm more manipulative. And they don't know that... I was paying my broker way too much money. I paid him $31,000. I would have saved if I'd been with Keller Williams. It's just a long story. But anyway, I agree with you. The training here is second to none. So I'm really glad you guys landed here. Jason. I'm Jason Miles. Uh, I am a uh, air traffic controller by profession. Oh, wow. So I've been well, you can concentrate. Ooh. <laughs> Scary. So I have been licensed for about nine and a half years. Great. I've been fairly active. Most of that time, I've been successful a little bit of that time. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I was just able to to manipulate my uh, career profession uh, hours. So I work mostly nights now. Okay. And I've <clears throat> opened up my schedule in the daytime. So I've always been active in real estate, but now it can be like part of the community. So Good. Welcome. Hi, where are you? Hi, sorry to be late. It's all right. Um, my name is Xavier Yankee. Xavier? Yep. Guys? Um, I am part of the BNE group. So I've had my license for two and a Whose group were you part of? Pam Beanie. Oh, Pam, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been for about two and a half years, and I made the jump to full-time real estate about eight months ago. So, Good. Yeah. Welcome. Angel. Angel, hi. Hi. Um, 
I started studying last Monday <laughs> for my license. Congratulations. That's okay. That's love great. It. Love it. I'm having a blast. Uh, Sign my paperwork for here this morning. Awesome. So, Congratulations. Uh, excited to be here this week and it's fun. Good. Good. Welcome. I'm Tyler. I'm about three months old now. <laughs> um, uh, still very new, very green, but very excited. I I love it here. So yeah. Great. I watched one of your old videos. Did you? So I'm excited to be here. Did you like it? Yes. You're smart. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to just tell you it, this is very open and very if you have a question, just I want it to be back and forth. I really want you guys to understand this because I feel like I'm giving you something that can tremendously help you. Uh, because it did me. Like I said, if I didn't know anybody. And I, you know, I, well, my friends going, oh, this is my, I always, he, she was in my sorority and I got to sell her house and stuff. I'm like, well, bully for you. I don't have that here. So if I can do it, you guys can do it. There's nothing special about me. So got to work hard. Okay. So we're going to loosely look over this. I encourage you guys to um, um, read it. In, in earnest, because I'm gonna I'm gonna defer I'm gonna deter from it a little bit in different parts. Okay, do not call. Um, if you're gonna call, you cannot call and ask for anything. You can call and give information. Is my understanding. <clears throat> like a lot of people use auto dialers. I hate to get called like that. I just hate it. It irritates the snot out of me. And I want to say I will never buy anything from you because of the way you're communicating with me. Take my name off your list. I get a little shitty when they, excuse me, little, my high D, which is driver, my high D comes out and I get a little, anyway, but it's okay to call people giving information. Not, I'll get to that when we talk more about having open houses. Okay. What are the benefits of an open house? How many people think it's a great idea just to give up their Sunday afternoon for no good reason? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a way to get business. And But if you aren't prepared and you don't go into it knowing some certain key things and with the right mindset, you might as well just go say, would you like fries with that order? You won't get business. And I know because <laughs> uh, when I first started teaching open houses years ago, I started going and looking at other people's open houses. And I went in this one and this lady was on the porch. She was reading a novel and she didn't notice me until I was right on her. She goes, oh, hi, would you like to come in? It's like, well, duh, I'm standing here at the door. Yeah, I'd like to come in with an open house sign. And um, she talked me through every room and it was just irritating. I had a, a true story. I had a very experienced agent from the tea company. We were at a broker's open and somebody from the general public came in. And she goes, this is the kitchen. So, Ooh, thank you for letting me know because there's an oven refrigerator. I couldn't have figured that out on my own. And this is the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. So open houses are inexpensive. You can do it. I would put my open house on Craigslist. I put it on um, Zillow. I would put it on my board and all of those things are free. Okay. And I know when you're starting out, money is a big deal. Money is a big deal anyway. Right? So it's inexpensive. High ROI, which is return on investment. If you don't put much in it, but you get dollars back, is that a good deal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Qualified leads from one listing. It's like, honestly, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. I took an agent one time and I said, I'm just going to show you how easy it is. I will get a piece of business out of this open house. And I did. And he goes, and I said, it's not that hard, is it? And he goes, no, it's really not. And, and let me make a caveat. I've been doing it for a long time, but if you keep doing it, you will get good and it will be like that for you too. Okay. So the worst thing you could do is prepare for an open house Sunday at noon and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to have an open house. I better go put out some signs and go hold the house open. That is you're wasting your time. You're literally wasting your time. A good open house starts on Monday. And on Monday, you're going to if you don't have an open house, ask, put something on the millionaire Facebook group. Or if you're on a team, you can ask that like Cam. I'm sure he's got listings at the Wazoo. So you can go hold one of his. Or put an advertisement out there. Hey, I'm a new agent. I want to do an open house. People from the office will let you hold their listings open. They will. It's okay. My recommendation is you don't do things that have, A, been on the market for months and months. Because it's already, if it's been on the market for two or three months, it's it's an old listing. And you're not going to get anybody new come and see it. So pick a house that's, you know, a few weeks to a month on the market or less. And don't pick anything that's half a million. That can get intimidating. Pick something that's like 
you know, between 200 and 300,000. That's my, I think, where your sweet spot will be for newer people. You ought to write this down, by the way. I'm giving you some good information. Is that just arrogant to say? But, I, <laughs> but I'm telling you, I'm telling you things I did that I don't want you to waste your time to make the same mistakes. Okay. Post online and then generate a call list and add 25 neighbors. Uh, post online, we talked about that. Craigslist, MyBoard, Zillow, truly any of those sites, those real estate aggregators, don't give them your money ever because they're not our friends. They are a false middleman to get between us and our customers. They aren't your friend, but they use us to, and then we have to give them 30 or 40% of the proceeds. No, I'm not doing that. But if, but they will give you Zillow and Trulia will give you a free page and you can advertise your open houses on that. And unfortunately, the public knows about those sites. They also say, well, my, it says my health is worth such and such. They're never right. But anyway, post online, generate a call list. Now, one of the things you can do, and then call 25 neighbors. Studies have shown that if you're holding a house open, the, there's like over 90% to five people on either side or 10 across are going to be listing their house within the next six months. That's a pretty strong statistic. And I have found that to be true. So what I would do, and yes, it's going to be uncomfortable at first, but it depends again on how you approach it and what your mindset is. You've got to watch your mindset. I would do a flyer and I would say, and I would do more than 20 houses. I would take a, you know, an evening and go knock and pass out lots and lots of flyers, neighborhood open house. Now, was it just a neighborhood open house? No, but I was inviting the neighbors because what if they know somebody who's looking to move? And I would just knock on the door and say, hi, I'm Beverly with Keller Williams. I don't know if you know, but the Smith's house just went on the market and we're having a neighborhood open house this Sunday from two to five. Who do you know is looking to make a move? Not do you know anybody? You ask a who you know. Who do you know? They go, hmm, like maybe from soccer, from church, from your work. You might have to give some, some uh, suggestions. Say, well, you know what? Come by. We'd love to have you come by. And plus, it's another opportunity. If you get to talk with somebody, it's another opportunity to build rapport. Because you want to be the person when someone thinks of real estate, they're top of mind, they think of you. And the way you do that is by repeated and measured touches. A touch is an email. It's a text. It's a pop by. It's a call. There's lots of different ways you can remind them that you were here and you were in real estate. Easy, right? I guarantee you people will come there. And then you add them to your, what they call the have met database. And Keller Williams, I don't know if they're talking about it so much anymore, but they used to talk about it a lot. Um, do they still have the have met and met database? Are you still seeing that on the database for people? Like you categorize and you have met or have not met them? I'm not sure. I have my own like CRM. I don't really. Okay. Yeah. Have met, it's it's you you communicate with people who differently who know you're in real estate than you do with the general public. And on your when you get into the database on Keller Williams, we have a very robust database and it will do marketing for you. But you gotta like have met, you need to touch them at least once a month. At least. So um then on that's what you're gonna do on Tuesday. On Wednesday, you're gonna post online. Oh, what's the other one that you want to post all the time that um, Craigslist, I would, I would put um, in Craigslist, we, we've done this, I went to this class on Craigslist, you put like exclamations, uh, and you put something like the old woman in the shoe would li should live here. And because you want people to read your ad, if you say four bedroom, two and a half bath in Carmel, mm, but you want to have some kind of a, a really catchy kind of thing that you would say that why people should look at that ad. You want it to gather their attention. And then in the headlines, open Sunday, two to five, you know, snazzy uh, condo in Bay Ridge, three bedrooms, two baths, blah, 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 blah. And then you put your information, okay? This is the other thing I was going to tell you. When you go, the open house is for you, okay? People think it's for the seller. It's really for you to get business. Now, if you can sell that house, should you? Absolutely. But National Association of Realtors Statistics, the last time I checked, it was 94% of people do not buy the house they see at an open house. So are the odds good that you're going to find the buyer for that house? No, 6%. That's not good. Okay. 
You can do install the KW mobile, mobile search app. If you heard about that yet, I know you probably have a cam, but you all heard about that. That's a great thing to give to people. And the good thing is it can search everything and it frames it in your information. So when they want to call somebody, they'll call you and not the listing agent. You always want to refer people back to you because this is about your business. And then you can put an open house sign in the yard. I, um, I would even put like the writers as they open Sunday two to five. And it may be if you're holding for somebody else, you ha- their sign's going to be the one that's there. But you can put like a writer on top. It depends on what kind of sign. I did those big four by four posts. They're wooden signs that are in the yard. And I had like a, a little six inch by 18 inch thing that said open Sunday two to five. You can also get your own open Sunday signs. You can make them at sign any sign shop. Put open Sunday, two to five, whatever. You can do whatever you want to do. But you want to make sure that people are driving by. See it, especially if it's in a like a main thoroughfare, your house of main thoroughfare. Uh, Thursday, you're going to post online again. Uh, invite database. Call people. Hey, I have this really great house open. You want to come by and see me? By the way, inviting people over. When you get your own, so this is not about open house necessarily, but when you get your own signs, if you're not on a team or something, Put your name really as big as anything else in there. My open signs, open house signs are so, they're not obnoxious, but they're bordering on it. But they're like that uh, really bright yellow green. And they're about this big and they're shaped like a house. And it has Beverly Fast Sinclair. And then has a red arrow. I mean, red and bright yellow green. That You want to talk, talk about fluorescent color? It says open Sunday two to five on the arrow. And people, I was new in the business, people say, because I put like 10 signs for every open house. I did all kinds of signage because I wanted to leave people there from two major intersections, like 116th and Meridian. You start from there and then you put a bunch of signs. It's a pain in the butt to take them, put them out, but it is so worth it to get more people. So I would start, like if I was holding an open house here, I would put a sign at 116th and Meridian and 116th and Town Road or ditch or, you know, what, and start, put a bunch of signs, make sure they're pointing in the right direction. I've I've tried to go watch somebody do an open house one time and their signs weren't, I never found it. So one of his signs was turned around. Um, but I was my first year in the business. People say, oh, I know you're so successful. You're doing so great. I said, thank you. How'd you know? We see your signs everywhere. What were they looking at? Mm-hmm. Was I top of mind? Was I radically successful? I was doing okay. But I didn't, I didn't say, oh, no, I'm just doing okay. I didn't say that. Oh, thank you, you know, because they sell my name, okay? You want to personalize everything. Okay, and then. Um, you can also, like, monopolize a whole neighborhood. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They kept seeing my signs, and they're like, what is that realtor in my neighborhood? Like, on the Facebook Absolutely. Top of mind, top yeah. of mind. The other thing I would do is you're going to have to put signs in the yards of people, like in their yard to direct people if they live on a corner or if they live on the main thoroughfare and there's a street they have to turn at. I would go earlier and knock on their door and say, hi, I'm holding the Smith's house open. And it's okay if I put a sign in your yard on Sunday. I'll I'll take it right out. I promise I won't do it. Or can I put it in now so people in the neighborhood will know about it? And then when they leave, when you leave, pick it up. And write them a thank you note and put a car wash ticket or something like that in there. Do you think anybody else, any other realtors are doing that? No, they're not. (laughs) No one's asking anybody. They're just putting their sign in the yard. What's the benefit of them of, A, you've shown you're doing something nobody else is doing. And B, it's another have met. And you get a chance now to add them to your database and drip on them. They're going to remember you. They're going to remember that lady who did that. Like I put a, a, I had a whole bunch of cookbooks made too. And I would drop off one of those. Thank you so much for allowing me to put your sign up early. Like put it up Friday and take it down Sunday after the open house. Any questions so far? You can stop me. Awesome. Okay, for one second. <laughs> like, wow. Hey, come in. Okay. There's one over here. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. So, um, you can prepare on Friday the market stats. What that's talking about in the comps, comps are comparable sales. What is active and what is sold. So if I, chances are most of the time you're going to have a house that's in a subdivision. Like I live in a neighborhood called Brookshire here in Carmel. I would look under 
poll. Um, have you done, have most of you done your MyBoard training? Yes, no? No, okay. MyBoard will show you, you can do all statuses, active, pending, sold, withdrawn, expired. And then for the legal, you would put Brookshire. And I would say everything that's sold in the past year. And I would print it out. You have, when you print something on my board, you can do like a whole sheet that has the pictures and the room dimensions and everything like that. You can also do a one line and it just tells you the address, bedrooms, bathrooms, pending date, sold date, and what it sold for. That's the one I would print for the comps because people, neighbors, when they move, they'll and people say, what'd you get for your house? Oh, we got what we wanted. So what do they think they got? List price, right? Mm -hmm. Chances are, do they get list price? No. <laughs> this, not maybe over yeah. Well, and that's that's why you want to be the person with the stuff and have that sheet with you when you go to the open house. And if you do it right, it'll give you like the average sales price of the neighborhood, the average bedrooms and bathrooms, et cetera. And that's good to have. So people know kind of like, oh, well, you know, this was sold for this amount and you can have full translations too, like a full sheet with the pictures if you want. Uh, neighbors are, all, especially if it's a neighbor, they want to know what's going on in their subdivision. They really do. Okay. And print open house flyers. I would not print one flyer. I wouldn't. I think that's a big mistake. Other people disagree with me, but I wouldn't give them anything. Because let's just talk about this now. Have you ever looked at like professions and how they're ranked for trustworthiness? Do real estate agents rank really high on trustworthiness? No. No, they don't. We rank right above lawyers. Okay? Not good. We're at the bottom of the list. So understand that not everybody, but some people have had bad experiences with other realtors. They've heard bad experiences from people they know or and their mindset. You, the thing about open houses is you have a very strong window, but it's a very short period of time in which to prove your worth and your professionalism. And we're going to get to that later. But that's why I don't hand him anything because have any of you ever picked up a real estate flyer? I no. Okay. Well, your eyes go down. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if it goes down, what, what kind of information is on a real estate flyer? Huh? Everything that was already on my phone. Yeah. But, like the flyer that kind of flyers. like the open house flyer. Most agents, when you walk in, the people say, "Welcome to my open house." And I'll have you a fly, hand a flyer, and the flyer will have things like the address, how many bedrooms and bathrooms, square footage, the price, updates, etc. What do you think if I if you're walking into a house and you've never seen this house, what kind of information are you going to want? The price, the bedrooms and bathrooms updated square footage, et cetera. And they've handed you all this information, right? Uh -huh. They don't like you. Most of them don't trust you initially. They're not going to be rude, but so why would they want to talk to you if you've given them everything? Did you, give them a, hmm? did you give them the paper first? I don't give them anything. I'm saying if you hand them a paper, that's a mistake mm -hmm. in my book. So I memorize all that and I make them talk to me because that's my that's my part of my short window to show my expertise and my professionalism and i'm telling you i can get a piece of business almost off every open house i do because i know i memorize a short list of stuff and i know my comps before i go in so with that so do you let them do like a self-guided tour or do you do we'll get to all that oh, no you're fine we'll get to all that door knocking if you want to go door knocking i think it's a great thing so um, Tyler, let's have you read the door knocking thing, what it says. Hello, this is Tyler Korn from Keller Williams with Indy Metro North. Mm -hmm. I'm at your door because Sally, Sue, mm -hmm. and Bobby, Joe Smith have asked me to invite you <laughs> to the open house on their home at Whatever. 129 West Street on Sunday, 1 to 3. Keep going. Feel free to bring someone with you from work or a friend or a relative that might be interested in buying in your neighborhood. By the way, when I find a buyer, I'd like to be able to share with them what people like about this neighborhood. May I ask you what it is that you like about the neighborhood? Excellent. And if you were to move, where would you go next? And when may that be? Would it, is that feeling comfortable to ask somebody? No. 
You're just talking to him. That's not a little robotic. I'm sorry. Well, but you know what? After you've done this like a hundred oh, times, it's going to become blah, 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 blah. You can do it without even really thinking about it. So um, I love the part where I ask them what you like about this neighborhood, because if you get them talking, they're going to feel like they have a better relationship with you. It's just psychology. Okay. I ask, who do you know? Rather than feel free to bring somebody, but either way is fine. Okay. Now, what you want to do when you have an open house, first of all, it's getting the house ready. And I'm kind of going out of order here. Okay. So I'm going to, I want to think about this because we talked about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, part of everything you have to do. When you show up for the open house, I would get there about a half hour early. So if you're doing two to five, I would get there around 1.30. Uh, if they're your listing, make sure the sellers are not there. People are going to feel more comfortable without the owners there breathing over everybody's shoulder. You want people to feel comfortable in the house. I have an open house kit. and It's going to give you some things, but I've walked into vacant houses that smell like dogs. I've walked to vacant houses and stood up for four hours straight, which was not that fun. <laughs> I've walked into houses with dirty, literally dirty food in the sink and dirty countertops and things. So I would have a little arsenal in a bag of what I needed at an open house. One of them is pet fresh deodorant for the carpet. Even if you don't, if you sprinkle it lightly, you don't need to vacuum it, but you don't want the house to smell bad. And people with dogs, and I have dogs, people with dogs sometimes don't smell their own dogs anymore. You want to have something like Windex and either Fantastic 409, some kind of general cleaner, uh, paper towels. If you want to really plus your open house, take a cookie sheet and take some of those sugar cookies or cinnamon cookies that you just cut off and you bake them. That's a great smell and a home smell when you walk in, you know, and then offer them to somebody. Hey, here's some cookies. Have a cookie and sit and chat with them. You want them to feel relaxed and, and get comfortable with you. So uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, bring something, bring work to work on. Remember I told you about that one lady that was uh, sitting on the front, she was reading a novel and I just really inconvenienced her by showing up at her open house. Um, bring something to work on and call your clients and tell them, hey, I'm at open house. If someone comes up, I'm going to hang up real quick. Just letting you know. How you doing? What's going on with you? Oh, sorry. Let me call you back. Got to go. Do something with work. Be Have your mind in the game while you're there. Look at the comps if you want to. Look at all the houses that you've previewed during the week. That's the one thing I didn't go over. I'm going to back up just a minute. You need to also preview at least 10 homes when you're going to do an open house. And what does a preview mean? It means you call and you set an appointment to see it, but you're going through quickly. When I did a preview on a home, I would do what I call a full translation, which is one page is only about this one house. It's called a full translation or full, full view or whatever it says on my board. And I would look at, um, I would get like 10 of these. I would look in the subdivision and I would also look outside the subdivision. I tended to go within the same elementary and junior high school. You know, if you're in Carmel, it's all gonna be Carmel High School. But I want to get something that if people are moving during the year and it's a four bedroom house, chances are they might have kids and they don't want to take them out of school. They won't have the same school. So you got to think like a buyer would. I would have call and make an appointment. Hi, this is Beverly Keller Williams. This is a preview appointment, which meaning the sellers can be there if they want to be. That's okay. You're going to walk through quick. You're going to not walk in, walk around, and you're going to take some notes like ugly wallpaper in dining room, new carpet in family room, snazzy master bathroom with walk-in shower, and I call them car wash shower heads, you know, the ones that the body washes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make notes about things that, that I could, because once you've seen a whole bunch of houses, and those of you who've shown houses forever, you show like six or seven houses, don't you start referring them to one thing like, oh, that's the pink bedroom house? People will too. So you want to get three things about the house that make it saleable, okay? You still want to know what the bad things are, but you want to get three things of a house that make it special. Everybody has something. Maybe it's a really pretty fenced yard. Maybe it's a dry basement that's got a lot of space. Maybe it's um, oversized windows. There's got to be something that makes that house something somebody might want to buy. Okay. Write those things down on your sheet because you will referring back to these sheets at your open house. This is where you get product knowledge. Okay. So going back to the front door, you're in, you're ready. You've unlocked the front door and I would sit somewhere in the vicinity of the front door. Like in the, if it's a living room or a dining room or something, I would sit there so I could see them walk up. 
because I want to be able to greet him at the door with a big smile. Hi, welcome. And I really am glad they're welcoming. I hope they're going to be my client. <laughs> welcome. You love me. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> Say, welcome to my house. Come on in. What we'll brings you guys out today? I would just talk to them like old friends. I really do. I think it's important to build rapport. Are you familiar with the neighborhood? And most of the time, if their neighbors are like, oh, yeah, we just live over with something. We live over on Castle Creek. It's just the next street over. Yeah, I know Castle Creek. Come on in. You're welcome to look. Um, who do you know from your name, from your job that might not be even looking to make a move or something? Just ask a question or two. And then everything that we talked about that was on the flyer, I'm going to now tell them. I'm going to tell them. If they say you have a flyer, say, you know what, we're all out. I'm sorry, but I will get you one uh, before the day's out. And all you're going to do is send them a my board listing sheet and make sure you get their information. Okay, so if I was kind of greeting you at the door and you didn't know me or anything, I would say something like, um, who wants to role play with me? What brave self? Okay. Hi, welcome. Come on in. What brings you out today? Well, I was just in the neighborhood. Uh, I live pretty close by, but I wanted to be nosy. Sure. Come on in. Not my nosy neighbors. I'm one myself. <laughs> Although this isn't my neighborhood. This is a great house. It was built in 1975 by George Swank. He was one of the high-end custom builders in Carmel at the time. This particular house has four bedrooms and uh, upstairs and two full baths, a fifth bedroom on the main level, which is currently be used in an office, and a third full bath plus a finished basement. A couple of things I want to point out to you when you look at it. It's got a great yard that backs up to the driving range, so it looks like a park in the backyard. The sellers have just redone the kitchen. It's all brand new with granite and hardwood floors, and the bathrooms are both new tiles surrounding the tub, new flooring, and the master is heated flooring. Also, new, newly finished basement. We're offered at three forty nine nine, dollars and I'm just going to let you look on your own. Thank you. How did that feel? Felt like you were creating this like image in your head that you were like, I don't know, felt nice and peaceful. <laughs> did it sound like I knew what I was talking about? Absolutely. Did it sound like I was professional? If I handed you a flyer here, come on and look around. Can you see the difference impact that would make than just giving them a piece of paper and letting them walk around and find out for themselves? This is part of that very narrow window that I was telling you about. You have a very narrow window of time to be able to make an impact on people coming in. Because people want to work with someone they trust and someone they like. Yes. So what happens when you're like you're talking to him and then someone else walks in? And then another person walks in, and then you're like, oh, God, four people. If, if you have, a, that's really not a good open house. I had a house open in Meridian Kessler one time, 90 groups through in three hours. I was a traffic cop. And they, if I would see people walk up and say, hello, let me tell you all about it at the same time, because I had no flyers. Uh, so I had to tell them about it. And if, and then the other thing is I did, and we'll, we'll get to it. We have, I have a feedback sheet and that's another thing that's important, but we'll get to that. But sometimes you can, sometimes you can't say, Hey, come on in, join the party. I'm going to tell them about the house. You know, I'll just, I just be friendly. Like they're my friends. They just don't know it. You're going to build rapport and you can um, say, are you new from here? I always like to ask people an open ended question that I know they asked. Um, Do you live locally? No, they know the answer to that. No, we're coming from Chicago. Oh, great. What brings you here? And just kind of talk to them a little bit. So you're going to bring rapport. I don't have them sign in yet because I don't think I've proved my value to them yet. I don't want them to ask something because they think I'm going to bug them. And I'm going to call them and pester them and not leave them alone. And it's going to irritate me. So I don't like when people ask me to sign in. I'll just say, um, um, maybe later. I don't, I don't do it. I'm... I'm a, I'm a very high driver, so I, <laughs> most people are more polite. I don't, no, I'm not going to do anything I don't want to do. Okay, so quality leads. Ask questions like, oh, great. Are you, are you familiar? Are you on the swim? What do you guys like to do or something? I'll just talk to them, talk to their kids, whatever. It's build some kind of rapport. If I see they have a, a Texas license plate, are you guys from Texas? I am too. Where are you from? Yeah, one kind of community is my alma mater. I was like, oh, Red Raiders. You know, <laughs> we, had this, we had this rapport. Uh, Identify willingness, and which means you're willing to help them, and you're going to be doing this, definitely. And then provide value. You can show them a neighborhood snapshot. I would rather you tell them. Rather than showing them a statistic, do you see how much more powerful it is if you can just say it? Does that make sense? You guys are looking at me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you do that by, I want you, and we're going to be role-playing this, so we'll go over this, and all of you guys are going to get to do this, too. Um what happened to my mouse? Why is this not working? 
Any of you guys techie? Okay, I'll call Kristen. Um, did I blow it out? Still blowing out loud. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. I see it. I see it. Yay. Didn't have to call Kristen. This is, they had the, um, the capture the lead. Mine's a little bit different and I'll show it to you and I can send it to you if you want. It's, it's just, I try to get a little bit more information because I can get it. If I've proven value, remember, they don't like me and they don't necessarily trust me when they walk in. They think I'm going to try to make them do something that I'm, it's more about my commission than about what they want. Do you see what I'm talking about? I call it commission breath. You know, yeah. you don't care a bit about me or what I'm looking for. So you got to be a good listener and you got to have product knowledge. Product knowledge is so important. Like I just told you about my house. I didn't have a sheet. I didn't have to look at anything. I just knew it. That's professionalism. That gives people confidence that I know what I'm doing, right? Would you agree? Okay. I want you guys to talk more. I feel like I'm doing all the talking. Talk more and ask me questions. Okay. Safety first. This is so true. It's never happened to anybody, but I know. But like new home construction, there's been in my career, now granted, it's, it's over 30 years, but there's been two open house, two people at a builder model in other states that were killed. It was always by somebody they knew that came into the open house because you're kind of, um, you can't just leave the house, okay? But there are there wackos out there? Yes. Are most people wackos? No, most people are not. But, um, and maybe you guys get this too. Maybe, I don't know if you guys get it as much as women do, but have you ever had just like a, a funny feeling, you got the hair on the back of your neck stands up? Yeah. Trust that. Trust that. I took a say, uh, bunny trail, so I'll tell you why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. I took a, a self-defense for realtors class, and it was karate, and I ended up staying for another five years. I got my third degree black belt. Yes, I'm a third degree black belt in karate. And trust your gut. If you start having that feeling like something's not quite right with this person, um, what you need to do is get your keys or your phone for sure. And um, I would never park in the driveway. I park in front of the house so I can get away. But say, you know what? Come on in. I've got to make a quick call. So just go ahead and look around. Don't let the person go in and block your exits. I used to, before I was in karate, I used to go down to the basement first and turn on all the lights and being a good realtor, making sure they can see on their way down. They could have chopped me up into bits down there because they blocked my entrance. You see what I'm saying? They got between me and my exit. So if you get that, even from the very first say, go ahead and just look down and go stand in the front yard, call your friend, call your spouse, call the office and say, hey, I'm at, give the address and tell your person, your special person, if I call you in the address, you need to walk, you need to write it down, get over here now. Okay, just tell them ahead of time. I'm at 1234 Main Street. Can you, can you pull the red file on that? If you call Ashley, she'll, she'll know that means we got to get somebody over there mm -hmm. and stay in the front yard. This is a true story. I'm a big girl, okay? I'm not a little tiny flower. I'm big, I'm heavy, I'm, I talk big. Most people aren't, they're probably more afraid of me than I can be of them, okay? <laughs> but this really happened. I had a listing on five acres out by, uh, what was it called? Verizon, Clips, whatever, the, the music center. Oh, is Threw off. Threw off, okay. Everything out there has five acres, so the houses are way far apart. The house is vacant. Guy called me and he said, hey, I want to see this house. I said, And he asked if it was vacant. I said, yeah, it's vacant. You could just move right in. I'm giving him information, right? So I said, well, why don't you come? To, can you come at 1130? He goes, he said, yeah. I said, that's great. Um, I'm showing it at 11 o'clock so I can just stay there and meet with you afterwards. He never showed up. The phone number he gave me was not the right number. Could I have been a little bit in the, in the basement? Yes. <laughs> so if you get... If with an open house, you can't, I mean, and it's never happened to anybody I know. I'm not trying to get scare anybody. I'm just telling Ted to be aware. Yeah. If you get that uncomfortable feeling, go stay in the front yard with your phone. If you need to call 911, like if they do anything inappropriate, if they take anything, it's better they take something in the open house than take your life. Honestly, it is. And I don't know, guys, do you ever feel afraid? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I, I don't, I'm not a guy. I didn't know because I think guys are strong, but. Um, yeah, just be careful. Just be careful and guard yourself and be smart about it. And it doesn't offend them if you tell them, I say, I've got to make a quick call. Go ahead and come on in and, and, and go stand outside. 
and wait till the person you call say one two three four Main Street. I need the red file if you have to. <laughs> you know, one two three four Main Street is great. And if they can't, if they're not there yet, and the person comes out and said, "Hey, can you show me something?" I said, "Yeah, in just a minute. Someone's bringing me something. I've got to show you something about the house. I'm waiting for the folder." And stay in the front yard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just again, I've never had to do that. Hope you never do either. But that. yeah, I think that showing the house is not an old house is probably the more sketchy places that I've been. Sometimes, um, yeah. Because oftentimes you walk in first, you let the clients walk in after you, or and then they close the door and never gets locked. Well, and they could close the door and lock it and then block well, I mean, you. Like, I've had mul multiple times where someone will see us walk in and then walk in right behind us. Mm -hmm. COVID was terrible too because you'd, you'd have them just the door never got locked at all. So it's it, again, it's it's probably not going to happen to you, but be smart. Be smart. When your spidey sense kind of goes off and you go, "Ooh, I'm getting a weird vibe out of this person." Protect yourself first. You are not, you are worth more than anything in anybody's house. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, meet the neighbors. That wouldn't be a bad idea, especially if you're doing something out in the country. Hey, I'm holding this house open. Or you can do that on rumors said five on either side, 10 across. You can go door knock. And a flyer said, you know what? Come over. I'd love to talk with you. And I, this is my car. You'll see my car out in front. So you're building awareness. Okay. Establish an escape route. That's the thing I said, never let anybody. And when you have a house with just a front door and a back door, you've got to watch, especially if there's, this is the thing that kind of confused me when I first started in real estate. I'd walk in and there'd be a family. The husband would go one way, usually to the garage. The wife would go to the kitchen. The kids, I'm trying to keep them destroying stuff, okay? So it's like, which way do you go? People will do that in open houses too. Um, I just try to stand in a, in a convenient location where they can look but where I have my eye on where I can get out. And if someone starts walking to close the door, I'm walking over there with them. Again, not to be threatening, not, and I don't make it real obvious, like, I don't know if you're a wacko and I'm going to make sure you don't, but just, you know, talking to them and say, oh, it's a pretty day. Let's leave the door open or some, you know, you can, you can, you know, um, improvise on that. Let someone know where you are and when you'll be done. And, say, and again, call the front desk, say, I need the red file. But if you're showing like way far away, it's it's harder. It's harder. So, but I, but again, just be careful. And then charge your cell phone. And we have cell phones. That, I just got a new phone that has 24 hour batteries. Best thing I've done. I even have a Mophie on my phone because my battery ran out by like two o'clock every day. Make sure your phone is charged. Okay. Pursue, follow up and convert. So before we do this, okay, yeah, I want to talk about the mechanics of what we're saying, like um, and having an open house. And this is where we're all going to role play and everybody's going to do it. I know it's going to be a little bit nerve wracking for you, but I'd rather you learn here than out there in the general public. Okay. So I want you to take a minute and think of your own house where you live, the house you grew up in, where you're at now. You need to know the address. I want you to be able to tell me the square footage, make it up if you don't know. How many bedrooms and bathrooms? Year built or who built it or something like that. And three things that make the house special. So what you're going to do is you're going to, we're going to greet somebody. You're going to greet somebody. Hi, how you doing? What brings you out today? Are you familiar with the neighborhood? Well, and if there's like a neighborhood, you can tell where the pool is, blah, blah, blah. But the main thing is, is say, well, let me tell you a little bit about this house. Okay. This house was built in whatever, and it doesn't have to necessarily be in this order. This is a four bedroom, two and a half bath. This house this is a five bedroom, three bath house built in 1985. Uh, it's got four bedrooms up, one on the main, three, two full baths up, one third bath on the main. Gorgeous yard that backs up to the golf course with mature trees and three things. Oh, what did I do? Sorry. I just touched something and the screen went dead. Okay. Um, and three things about the house. And then after you do that, and I'll do it one more time to kind of model for you, you're going to say, oh, and by the way, would you fill out a questionnaire? I've got them in the kitchen because the sellers always want to know what buyers think of their house. And I would have my open house sheets are like a piece of paper 
back. Let me see if I can. At the end of this, remind me, and I'll see if I have it. I think I have it in my email. I can email it to you guys. But it's just a eight and a half, eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. So, welcome to my open house. What's the most desirable feature? What's the least desirable feature? What did you think of the price? Then I have name, address, phone number, and email. What am I really worried about? Contact information. Because if they're out the door and they liked the house and I don't know how to contact them, I, there goes my commission. And again, I don't be about commission breath, but if you're going to be there working and you're the one that got them interested, you deserve to get paid, right? Okay. So, um, well, we're going to we just, just follow the, the things you'll need as well. Make sure. sure. I'll read them, ask them a little something, and I'll say, okay, well, this house. You can either set start with bedrooms, bathrooms, if you want to. You can start with the year built, whatever, square footage. But I would get all of those three towards the first. Year built, square footage, bedrooms, bathrooms. Then I would say three things that make the house special. What are the three things that you think this house is most special that would help them sell it? Then you're going to let say, go ahead and look around. I'm going to model to you. You're the buyer. You're going to walk in. Okay, I'm the, I'm the agent. Okay, you're going to be the agent next. But right now, I'm the agent. You're the buyer. Okay. Ding dong. Hi, come on in. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. I'm Beverly Fast Sinclair. Nice to meet you. I'm Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. I always want to get the first and last name. And you raise your eyebrows and lean in and nod like, yeah, you can give me your last name. That's why I do. Yeah, it's hard not to. I used to shake hands. I wouldn't give them back their hand until they gave me the last name. <laughs> I really didn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I did. One little guy looked like Mr. Magoo. He started sweating. He wouldn't give me his last name. But if you're not giving me your last name, you're not. I, I'm not there to play games. You know, I'm there to get business. And I know what I need to have happen in order for you to feel good about me. So with COVID, though, I don't shake hands so much unless they do. It, some people are just you got to respect that. Well, welcome. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this house. Yeah, I can tell them about the neighborhood if I want to and I could you know do whatever. Uh, this house was built in 1982. It's got 2,800 square feet uh, on the first two floors, plus 1,200 in the basement, probably three quarters of which is finished. The other half is storage. Um, it's five bedrooms, four on the on the upstairs, fifth on the main, two full baths up, one on the main. And a couple of things I want to point out that make this house really neat. It's got a brand new master bathroom and it's got heated tile floors. The kitchen's brand new. It's got granite countertops hardwood floors throughout the whole first level. And the um, basement has got a large storage room and there's shelving back there as well as a rec room downstairs. We're being offered at 439.9. I'm just gonna let you look around on your own. And if you wouldn't mind, can you fill that out one of these questionnaires in the kitchen? You know, the buyers always like, sellers always like know what the buyers think of their house. Sure. Okay. Okay, look, look, look. That's okay, you're going to initially, just count on it, it's okay. Now, here's part number two of the meet and greet. You come back and say, so what do you think? It's great. Really? What do you like about it? Um, I like the space. Space? How many bedrooms there are. Okay. I'm writing this down on a sheet of paper, okay? We're a little weird about the neighborhood. Neighborhood. Okay. What was weird about it? Just I'm using the same. You see, I'm using the same adjective he gave me. It's called neuro-linguistics programming. I'm going to France and speaking French. We think it's a little far from like local area, like food, um, shopping. Do you want to be close? We prefer that. How how close do you want to be? How many minutes away? Maybe within fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Well, um, have you been pre qualified by a lender? Have. Okay. What are they? Uh, what are you pre qualified for? I wasn't prepared for that one. <laughs> they would know. But yeah. I, Give me a number. Uh, three hundred. Okay. You know, have you visited uh, Springville Ponds, Springville Village? Are you, can you be on the west side of Carmel? We had to. Okay. Well, there's Avian Glen on this side of Carmel. The houses are, it goes up to 350, so, but you can maybe get a little bit farther down. Those houses were built in the 1990s. Okay. And then there's a bunch, there's like three subdivisions, Springville Ponds, Ponds West, and Springville, and Springville Village all on the just off of Meridian. It's like five minutes from where the Walmart and the movie theater and Lowe's and everything is. Um, do you prefer the, if you prefer the east side, I'll tell you about Avian Glen. It's a really cool subdivision. It's got lots of ponds. So a lot of houses have ponds in the backyard. Um, and you know what? I saw a house there the other day I was showing. I'm pulling the things I previewed. Okay, remember? 
I, I may not, if, if I don't have them east side, I'll start talking about what's in Springville Villages or Springville Ponds that I previewed. But I'm looking ar- around. This house was really cool. You said you liked the bedrooms and you, you felt a little weird about the neighborhood. Yeah. If this neighborhood was closer to shopping, how would you feel about it? Fine. This has the same kind of vibe to it, but the houses are a little bit newer. So it's going to have more than nine foot ceilings and two story entries. Is that attractive to you? It is. Yeah. Okay. This house was really cool. It had four bedrooms. They were all upstairs. Do you need five? No, we would like it. Well, it had a den on the main level. It wasn't big enough for a bedroom, but it's definitely big enough for an office. And you walk in, it's a two-story entry with a split staircase, had a living room and a dining room, really great kitchen with this huge island in the back, and a beautiful view of just like manicured yards with a pond. Sounds like something you might want to see. Are you busy at six o'clock tonight? I'm not. Okay. Well, tell you what, um, how can, what's the best number to contact you? I didn't ask him what his phone number was. What's the best number to contact you? 317-238-9. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call. I'll see if I can get us in. And I will call you either way to let you know we can meet over here. Here's a map to the house. And I'm going to draw him how to get to this house. And I'm going to give him the address off the paper that I previewed previously in the week. Y'all with me so far? Yeah. Okay. If I didn't preview that house. Now, first of all, do I sound like I'm professional? Absolutely. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do I, do I sound like some of you would be confident that I could take care of you? If I had previewed the house, how much of that would you have felt? If you had. If I had not previewed the uh, house. And I just said, not yeah, really I can say, I can find you. I can find you a house. You're working with a realtor? I'll yeah, help you. Totally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. not. No, people have done that. Yeah, exactly. You don't, and if, I don't ask if they have a realtor because that's a blow off. I used to do that. You have a realtor? Yeah. Who are you working with? Uh, Remax. Yeah, working with Remax. I don't work with anybody. I hadn't proven my value because I proved my value. They're going to give me the information. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So if that's why it's important, and by the way, I'm going to, I, I want to backtrack for a minute, write this down. People usually move for the following reasons. I would look for something. They want something bigger. So I would go 30% bigger or 30% smaller. I would look at the same price range, 30% more expensive or 30% less expensive, because people may come in and go, oh, we can't afford this. Really? What are you comfortable in? 30% is good. Um, Older, newer. Sometimes my house was built in 75. People maybe want something with high ceilings. I know it's not going to be in my neighborhood, anywhere in my neighborhood or anywhere in the surrounding areas around there. They're going to have to go about a half mile down the road. Okay. Uh, Smaller, larger. These are the areas that people are going to give you um, pushback on it. Actually, we don't need something this big. We're downsizing. Or, you know, we've got 15 kids. We need at least six bedrooms. You know, whatever uh, they're going to say. Yeah. <laughs> higher, lower in price. We talk about that and I go 30% roughly higher and 30% lower. And then a special feature like we need a finished basement. And this house does is not say it has basement wasn't finished. We need a main floor master, that kind of stuff. And in fact, let's, let's do, I'm changing this a little bit. Let's go around the room. I'm the realtor and you're going to give me an objection. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to overcome the objections. And it's not necessarily, you're doing this to prove that you have, you're professional, you know what you're doing, you know, the market. You're going to give me an objection. One of those things. I need something bigger. I need something smaller. I can't afford this. I, we can go up in price. I need a main floor master. I need a finished basement. You're going to hit, give me an objection. And I'm going to counter the objection with something I've looked at. Okay. So I'll model this for all of you. And then you guys can do it for me. Okay. So what do you think? That's objection. Nice. Okay. Um, we think that backyard doesn't offer very much space for our dogs. Oh, you got dogs? Yes. Great. What kind? Uh, Labrador. Labrador. You got big ones. How many do you have? Two. Okay. Great. So maybe something closer to a quarter of an acre might be better for you? Sounds nice. Okay. Um, anything else you didn't like about the house? Oh, really? Okay. Actually. So, you know what? I was looking through. Have you seen this house over on Broadway? Uh-huh. It's a little bit older than this. It's not, it doesn't have a two-story entry, but it has nine foot ceilings. This house has a great yard and it's fully privacy fenced. It's got a really great kitchen. I don't know if you guys are cooks. 
and has a main floor master with three bedrooms up. Would that work for you? Sounds fine. Is it in the same school district? Yeah, same elementary, junior high, and high school. Yeah, let me give you this. And you know what? What are you doing tonight? Or would tomorrow work better to go take a look at it? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. What time? Um, okay. What's the best way I can get in touch with you to confirm that we got the showing? Email. Okay. And if I need to call you, how can I reach you? Um, yeah. You don't let them get away with that. Okay. Then, Did that feel bad to you? Okay. Normal, like, didn't feel like it was a. I wouldn't have sleazy used car salesman. Yeah, pushy. And I don't want to be pushy. I don't like it when people are pushy with me. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I really want to find out what they're looking for and give it to them. Right. Yeah. So with that case, what about when they say, oh, I already got a realtor. I'm already working with. Really? Who are you working with? Uh, Xavier. Did he get his license back? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I am so kidding. I don't want to say that. I say that regardless of whoever they said. You know what? Xavier's a good realtor. He'll take care of you. He's he's a pro all the way. And you know what? He'll take good care of you. Stay with him. I don't try to client swipe. And if it's somebody that you don't think highly of, like if they, they give you about five names of realtors that I don't like. And you're you're thinking of them, aren't you, right now, aren't you? No, no, no. I like the other two license back. Or I say, oh, I know his parole went through. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, if I don't like them, I'll just say, oh. <laughs> and that's all I say. I'm a Southern girl. That's it. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so, yeah, don't, don't bad mouth other people. Although I did this. Uh, I did ask this. This is strange. I don't know why. This was when I first started doing it this way. I asked this lady. She had a realtor. Don't ask them. If they have somebody, they're, if they have somebody they are tied into, they'll tell you. I have one guy said, I've been working with this realtor for months, but if not, I would pick you. You're a smart man. But if your realtor's doing a good job for you, stick with her. I, I don't, unless it's somebody's related, I don't, I try not to bad mouth. I'll just go, oh. Well, it's weird when they're, they're going to tell you that they have a realtor and they're like, yeah, but they haven't gone back to me in like three months. I'm like, <laughs> well, that's that's what I I asked this one lady one time. She came in. And she goes, "Yeah, we have a realtor." And the way she said it, I said, "Do you like them?" And I can't stand them. And she threw it in her pants. She only begged me. Didn't it? I said, "Why in the world are you working with her?" Then she goes, "We have to because of relocation." I said, "I am fully relocation certified. I'd be happy to help you, and I'd be happy to pay their commission, their referral fee." And I ended up selling them that house. I sold that house and sold them another one, and then I sold that house and sold them another one. Wow. So it's appropriate that, like, if somebody doesn't enjoy their realtor, you know, or they're like, oh, I'm working with one, but I haven't heard from them in three months, it's okay to then just be say, like, you know oh, what? You know, say, you know what? You will not have that problem with me. I will have an email in your box tonight, and I will be reaching out to you at minimum once a week. If you're really ready to go, my car is your campground. You can be we can live with each other until we get it working out. Or so yeah. I will. If they if they aren't tied to them or they don't feel good about it, I I yes. But if they're like trying to, I don't they say, oh, we're working with so and so and they we've been working with her for months. I don't try to be a client swiper. Yeah. That's just so with clients, I don't want to do that either. But say I had somebody who came in and they one of the first things they said was that they were meeting a potential realtor there the very for the very first time at that specific moment. Do you think that it's acceptable for me to follow up the next day? Just absolutely, thank you. absolutely. Or say, yeah, absolutely. I did, I, I mean, if it's just, I, you wanna do the, what's right, but if they don't have a relationship, not doing anything, I think it's fair game. That's fine. Oh, I just don't want to that person. Well, there's somebody, like I said, if they're working with somebody and they lie, I'll, you know, just don't, cause you would, I've had people call me and said, you know what? They, they told me, the old Brooklyn House person told me you're a really great agent because I had had a cross deal with them or something. You want to be that kind of person, you know, And but don't feel afraid if they, they said, oh, we're supposed to be somebody here. We don't know them, but we're just going to be here today. I say, great. Uh, is it okay if I follow up with you? You can ask them that or just do it. Yeah. Just, I go on the assumption, I'm just going to start serving you. I'm just going to start helping you. I'm going to be your realtor. You just don't know it yet. I start asking questions like I would a buyer. You're going to be my new best friend. You just don't know. And I have a lot of clients who turned into really good friends. Mm -hmm. Really, I did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what do you think? Well, we loved it. The only problem is I have really bad knee arthritis and I really need a master bedroom 
on the first floor. We're having a hard time finding that, but. Is a ranch home okay? I would love a ranch. Okay. Do you have, have to have four bedrooms or three work? Uh, I prefer four. My older children still live at home, I'm trying to get rid of them, but they keep sticking around. <laughs> they're like that, aren't they? Yeah, I've got a 23 year old. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. What about there was a, a ranch with a base, bedroom in the basement with a small window? That'd be great. They would love that. Let me just show the house this week. Now, this is, is it's about a mile from here. Do you care about what part of Carmel you live in? No, I'm really flexible. We travel a lot in the whole kind of radius around Carmel, so I, I'm good wherever. This house is in, um, oh, I'll just use Springville Village again. It's a ranch and it's really cool because it's real open. The great, if you like openness, the family room, the kitchen, and the great room are all like one big room. There's not a lot of walls. Does that appeal to I you? I love that. Awesome. Yeah. Nice master, snazzy master with a big walk in shower and a nice size closet. Two bedrooms with a bath in between, and it's also the guest bath. And then there's a, a bedroom and a bath and a wet bar in the basement. Uh, this one's listed at $279.9. Have you been pre-qualified by a lender yet? Yeah. Okay. Is that something that worked for you? I would love to see it. Okay. Well, here's the address. And um, how can I reach you? If we Are you busy tonight or want to go see it tomorrow instead? I, we're actually available tonight. Okay. Let me try to get us in at six o'clock. What's the best number I can reach you at? Now, if you didn't know me and I just said, hey, do you have a realtor? Can I work with you? How would you feel about me asking, saying all that? I am very similar to you and I would be totally offended. So I'd be like... Fast, have a nice life. But like, yeah. No. Yeah. No. But I would love this interaction we just had. I think I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> and all I've done is previewed houses during the week, at least 10. The more you can get, the better. Because especially if you're not real seasoned, the more you see houses, the more you'll start understanding complexions of neighborhoods. Mm. And you'll you'll start the more product knowledge you have about what's out there, the better. So okay. Okay, so what'd you think? Yeah, I really did like it. Really? Good. What'd you like about it? I uh, like the open class of the kitchen. You know, there's one thing I just wasn't sure about. Okay. There's the, all the bathrooms just have walk-in showers, and I'm really like soaking time. Okay, you want a soaking tub. Okay. Do you want jets in it? Is that important? Yeah. Okay. What else? Here's a great question. Write this down. What else? What are what are the things would your new home have? Um, an open front bed kitchen. Which, nice peaceful bathroom um i prefer a window in the bathroom to have some natural light in yeah that might sound a little odd but i really like my downtime got it i do too man after my own heart um would you go up a little bit in price because there's a house over in mohawk hills it's just about less than a quarter of a mile down 126th street it has now the masters on the main is that okay yeah and it's got like a little wing and it doesn't have a little light, but it has a skylight. Okay. So you can see out, but it doesn't have a window. Okay. But it has a big soaking tub with jets. It has a separate shower and the bathroom is really big. In fact, they have like a circular seat in there that you can sit down and get ready and get dressed in the bathroom. Uh, it does have the open concept, uh, great room, kitchen, breakfast, all really open. It's got two other bedrooms and it's got a, a half story upstairs with a fourth bedroom or a loft or whatever you want to do with it. It's listed at $399. Is that something you might want to take a look at? Yeah. Okay. Here, let me write you down. Let me write the name of the street down. And what's the best number I can reach you? I'm going to try to get in to see it tonight, you said? Or? Yeah, I'm free tonight. Let me see if I can get us in about six o'clock. Okay. How can I reach you? Uh, two, six, yeah. Okay, great. I will be calling. I'm going to call right now if, as long as nobody else comes in the open house. I'm going to see if I can get us in. So I'll be, I'll be calling you back. Hopefully, uh, if the seller's or we'll get back with the showing company within the hour, but it will definitely be before six o'clock. Okay. Okay. Good. I'll see you in a little bit. I'm good. How'd that feel? Comfortable. And did I know everything about everything in the market? No. Uh, main floor masters is a big thing. I will always look if the ma ma masters of stairs, I will always find another main floor master someplace else because I myself am getting to be where I don't want to do stairs. It's, it's, I had a really bad accident in October and I was on a walker and I just don't want to do mess with stairs anymore. Yeah. So, okay. Can you rephrase or uh, say that question to your client again, your potential client? What, what? If you're gonna if you're gonna dream out loud, what would your new home have in it? What features would your new home have? Because the more they use the word dream home, I always always wondered about that. 
if you dream out loud, what would your new home have? It's not in that dream home, but whoever talks more, as far as you want them to, I got to come back. That was yours. <laughs> huh? That was yours. No, that's my phone. Um, I would ask them that because you want to find out what they really need. There's no use wasting time if you're not, you think, you know, that's why it's good to ask questions of people. And I and you don't want to do like 20 questions. Okay, what do you want? What else do you want? What do you want? Okay, why is that important? You know, you need to you need to intersperse it with some things or ask like, okay, like I've said, okay, it doesn't have a window, but it has a skylight. Or if it doesn't have a window, would that be a killer for you? Would that be a deal breaker for you? Um, you're trying to go from general to specific, like I want a big yard, you know, or like he said, he had dogs. So I made sure I found a house with, with a fence yard and big dogs, privacy fence. <laughs> so that's what I do. But if you were going to dream out loud, what would your new home have in it? Dream out loud. Okay. So Jason, what'd you think? It was very nice. I uh, appreciate you having the open house. Yeah. Um, your, the home shows very well. Great. Is this something you might consider? Um, probably not. I just stopped in today. I, I think more of what I'm looking for is probably uh, more of an outdoor oasis. Um, what would I'd that really, look like? I'd really like to have some version of a, a big fire pit and maybe a kitchen. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Is that something you want there or could you add that yourself if we found the right setting? Probably like to buy into it. Okay. Um, I think that that's not impossible, but it's going to be hard to find. Now, the hot tub, we'll find some, but outdoor kitchens have not caught on here yet. But maybe if we looked a little bit under in price, you could put it in professionally before you moved in. Would that work? Yeah, I guess my... Uh... A challenge to that is I don't know any contractors in the area. I do. <laughs> I can certainly help you with that. Um, what else is important to you? An outdoor oasis, so it have the hot tub and the outdoor kitchen. Yeah, I, I probably want something more where everything's on the main level. I, I don't hate a two story, but I like everything on the main. Okay. And have you talked to a lender yes. to get pre qualified? Yes. What did he say you're qualified up to? Uh, Seven fifty. Okay. Do you want to go that high? Yes. It certainly opens up options. <laughs> okay, great. Um, there's a couple of, there's a couple of subdivisions you might want to see. I have not looked in this price range because that's more than 30%. So I'll probably say, are you know, maybe I might ask, uh, are you looking for a newer house, older house? What is it, what do you prefer? I haven't really thought about that. I'm just looking for what appeals to be Okay. Uh, you mentioned outdoor oasis. What would it look like if you were sitting in your hot tub? What would you see in your backyard? Would it be privacy? Yeah, probably uh, not direct uh, uh, eyes on on the hangout area, but I, I wouldn't. I'd like to be in a neighborhood. I don't need to. Okay, the reason I'm asking that is that developers, especially if you like houses that are do you like open concept kind of houses, yes. that's gonna probably be from the 1990s on. So developers try to get as many houses in an acre as they can. So get, I'm trying to think of what kind of setting we can find you that's open but still has a view. Um, there is a subdivision though, it's called Laurelwood. And if you go out from here, you're going to go across 106th, you're going to cross Meridian going west, and it'll be on the south side of the street. Laurelwood is right there, as well as the subdivision next to it. They all have very large yards, and they're about in the price point you're looking at. They're not, but I, they're probably gone up by now. But um, you might go drive around there, and you know what? I'm going to, what, what's the best number I can get back with you? I'm, I, I, I know somebody who has a house that's coming on the market, but I'm not sure if it has the main floor, uh, everything on the main level. What's the best number I can get back with you? Three one seven seven nine six two thousand. Let me give them a call, and I will get back with you. Uh, I'm going to probably call you anyway. Are you home tomorrow evening? Yes. I'm going to have some houses for you to see tomorrow. So maybe we can, can – how can I send these to you during the day tomorrow? Are you available? Yes. What's your email? Okay. Um, great. Well, I will be in touch. And maybe if you get back with me, we can maybe see something tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. I didn't have a, I didn't have something direct, but I knew some places you could go. The other thing I'm going to do, and this is a smart thing to do too, I think, is he wants something unique. It's very unique to have an outdoor kitchen. Very unique. Now, a lake house, yes. In the cup division, not a lot of them. But 
I'm also going to look for the expired houses that never sold and withdrawns. And I'm going to look from seven to eight. And I'm going to look for things that, that are like master on the main. That would be one of my criteria. And I would look at all the pictures of the backyard. Because maybe you can get a one-time showing if they're still thinking about moving. Because if it isn't on the inventory, you got to go find it. And I and, and look for FISBOs too. I've sold FISBOs. You can sell FISBOs. You need to get them to sign a one-time showing that if I bring a buyer, you'll pay me, you know, three and a half percent. But you need to get that signed before you take your people over there. Mm-hmm. How did that feel to you? Good. That was a little, I was kind of thought, I was like, oh, you give me something out my right credit. My not what our real house was what I was looking for, but that's okay. You you can certainly, you know, because I do know where those subdivisions are. So the, the main one that I'm getting from all that is just the direct appointment this evening or tomorrow. And that's like I'm going the presumption you're working with me. You just don't know it yet. Yeah. But did I prove value to you? Yes. Would I, would you feel, you didn't feel uncomfortable giving me your information. So I walked in, I told you everything about the house off the top of my head. And then I had an alternative because again, if you have product knowledge, you're going to come across as professional. And the only way you get, even if you're brand new, you can have product knowledge on a short area of things. And those are the bigger, smaller, older, newer, et cetera. Okay. So Rachel, what'd you think? Really like it, but me and my fiance are back and forth on if we want a subdivision home or if we want lake. Okay. How much land are you looking for? So two acres. North of two acres. Okay. What about if you had a house with an acre that's in a subdivision? Maybe it depends on the currency. I thought house you might be interested in. It's at 96th and Ditch of the subdivision back there. And in the very back, all of, I don't know why, just this person, and all of them have like wooded lots. It's very private, but it is in a subdivision. And there was a house there. It's listed at four ninety nine. Is that doable for you? You think? Yeah. I this house. Which how can I? I'm going to see if I can get us in. But I can tell you a little bit about it. It's a two story contemporary. Are you a contemporary? Yes. Lots of windows and even angular kind of windows. Edgy furniture. I don't know the furniture didn't stay, but it's definitely somebody who is not a traditional person as far as their decor. Backyard, huge deck. It's probably 20 by 30. Big deck. You could dance on this deck. And it's got like trees all around the back of the exterior. That sounds like something we want to see. Okay. Are you available tonight or wouldn't like maybe tomorrow work better? Probably tomorrow. Okay. How about 630? Okay. What's the best number I can reach you at? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. And you know what? What's your email too? I'm going to send you the listing on it. Blah, blah, blah. How'd that feel? Um, and some of this, again, some of the stuff you're not going to know, but you can talk about maybe additions and things. Uh, I couldn't think of the name of the addition, but I remember it was, it was 96 the ditch. It's in the Northwest corner, but, um, spring ponds, spring something anyway. Okay. And then, and then I would go home and that one, and I would find the house that I had seen. And if it's sold, just say, call and say it's sold, but I'm going to send you a couple. How is the battery low? It's plugged in. Okay. Now you're going to give me objection. So what do you think? Oh, it's nice. I think we're looking for something that's a little bit more open concept. Open concept. Okay. You mean like open between the kitchen, breakfast room, family room? Yes. Okay. Well, if you're going to dream out loud, what other features would your new home have? And you notice I'm writing all this down. Um, We like the newer construction finishes feel of like the home that you see now. Older. Um... No fixer uppers, three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage, big yard, gas stove. Gas stove, okay. Is building an option? Not right now. No. Okay. All right. Um, do you need to stay in Carmel or would Fishers work for you? Fishers would work. We've got a long location. It's, there's a lot more new construction because it's gone east. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of new construction. And what price range are you looking, looking to invest in? Uh, like $350, 400 yeah, there's a whole bunch on the east side of Fishers. It's closer to 69 than 31. Is that is that doable? Yes. 60, yeah, 69. So um, there's a couple of Indigo Lakes, Cumberland Estates, and something. 
I would, and I haven't, this is in Carmel, I probably not looked at that, but I'm drawing on previous knowledge. But I do know generally there is more new construction in Carmel than Fishers because they had land to go east. Carmel's were, were locked in. You either go to Westfield or you go to Fishers if you want new construction, unless it's really expensive. So, um, you know what? I can put you on my instant buyer notification program. It's a great thing. It scours the, the uh broker listing co-op or the MLS mm -hmm. and I can put in you want three bedrooms and two baths you want houses built from 2015 on so it's very new and chances are with that age it's going to be open and I will um, I will have it immediately inform both of us when something that is listed matches your criteria so we can be the first ones to know when something hits the market mm -hmm. all right well, what's give me your best contact information Instant buyer notification, all I'm doing is a prospect match, but it doesn't sound, prospect match doesn't sound nearly as good as instant buyer notification, does it? Yeah. It's how, saying something that's common in a powerful way. Okay, now it's y'all's turn. I have done the breeding, I've done the um, the, the follow-up. You have the greeting, you have the follow-up and listen for an objection. You're the agent and she's the buyer. So we've already done like hi pleasant. No, nope. this is the gotta do that part two. Okay. Hi, I'm Tyler. Hey, I'm Angel. It's me. And um, gosh, it's like the spotlight syndrome. You know what I mean? It's okay. Uh, so uh, so the house is forty-seven hundred square feet. It's built in two thousand and nine. It's five bedrooms, five bathrooms. Four bedrooms upstairs, three full bathrooms upstairs, nice. half bath on the main level, and then a full bedroom and bathroom in the basement. The basement's completely finished. Um, 20 foot ceilings. Criteria. Say two other things that's special about it. You want three features that are not bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, or price. And nothing not involving neighborhood or like surrounding. You can do one of those, yeah. So um, the neighborhood is up against a city park. So there's two oh, miles nice. of wooded walkway. Um, okay. Price. Oh, price. That's yeah. right. Um, four and a half days. Awesome, thanks. Appreciate it. Look around. Yeah, please look around. Okay. Okay. And we should have the questionnaire at the end. Oh, the questionnaire. And if you wouldn't mind, please going out this questionnaire. Um, just so uh, so much more. Okay, look, look, look. So what do you think? Oh, I've already looked. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was look like, what? what, what, what? <laughs> look, look, look means you you look through the house. Um, I'm shortening it. <laughs> yeah, we really liked it. Uh, it was nice. I think we're looking for something in a little bit lower of a price range, though. So. It's short. Um, how much lower? Uh, maybe four hundred thousand. Well, um, the good thing about this neighborhood is that it has varying different prices, um, different styles, and um, obviously different prices. So there are some ranch style homes that are thousands, three hundred, seven thousand. Um, still kind of same open concept, all if not 2019, if you were. Probably, probably. Give, it, give us a, a specific one. You're talking generalities. I want you to give them a specific house. Okay. Have you seen this house? That's how you start that. There's a house I saw. I haven't. You haven't? Oh. No. Tell her about it. Oh, again. I was um, so it's 350000 It has three bedrooms, two bathrooms. So I don't know if that's going to sway your opinion. Yeah, that'd be fine for us. Okay, perfect. Um, has great open backyard fenced in. It's up against that wood line that I had mentioned. Um, so you have straight access to that park, whereas the other one's still to it. How's that sound? I'd love to see it. Do you have time tonight? I do. Six o'clock sound okay? That'd be great. Perfect. And what is the best phone number to reach? 810 623 4855. Thanks. How did you feel? It felt good. I mean, I, obviously, it's a lot of. When you're doing it, it's, it, you feel, I don't want to say impressive, but you feel like you actually know what you're talking about. I had no idea what I was talking about, but it definitely. But did it come felt, across like he knew what he was talking about? Yeah. yeah. 
See, and that's what you want to project to the general public. You can be brand new and have a right. and have this little bit of information about the house. Everybody said there was a very narrow window. Yeah. The greeting and the follow-up with the narrow window where you get to shine your your information in to say, that person knows what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. I want to work with them. Mm-hmm. And other people, rather than saying, here's a flyer. Do you have an agent? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Okay. You're the buyer. No, you're the agent and you're the, the open house person coming in. All right. Hey, I'm Angel Katie. Hey, Xavier, great. How's your day been going? Don't take well. Yeah. Awesome. Nice Sunday. I'm missing my Sunday nap, but you know, fine. So, um, welcome to this house. Uh, it's 1,700 square feet. It's got three bedrooms, two and a half baths. All the bedrooms are upstairs. Um, there's a half bath downstairs. They did just redo uh, one of the upstairs bathrooms. It's really, really nice now. Um, and there's also a great loft upstairs that if like you have kids or you have uh, like a game room or something up there, it's pretty fun. There's uh, a recently remodeled gourmet kitchen, uh, which is beautiful and a fenced in backyard. So um, have a look around. Uh, and if you could just fill out a questionnaire in the kitchen, the Tell sellers the are really interested in the price. Oh, that's all right. You're doing fine. <laughs> They're asking 250000 um, and there's a questionnaire in the kitchen. The sellers are really interested in feedback and what you liked the most or maybe didn't like about the house. Okay. Thank you. Look, look, look. Look, look, look. All right. So, what do you think? Yeah, I actually really like everything, but I know we are with a two car garage. Gotcha. Okay. So, gotcha. So, um, what are some other things, if you were dreaming out loud, that you might enjoy in your house? Good well, girl. Yeah, um, it's a good question. So actually, this house, I love everything about it. Okay. We just really need that space. So the features are great. It has a kitchen, the bedroom size is great. I love the fence in backyards with two little pups. So awesome. that's very important too. Okay, so the price range is good yeah. and everything. Okay, so are you already pre-approved? That's what? Great. That's fantastic. Okay, so I have a house that is in the neighborhood just around the corner in this area. If you're looking to stay in this area, um, and it's almost identical in square footage. It's got a great backyard. Um, and it even has a dog park in the neighborhood for your dog. So you can go meet up and they can have their little puppy best friends. Um, mm-hmm. And if you're interested, uh, I could show you tonight. Are you available tonight or tomorrow? Um, probably tomorrow. Right? Okay. What about what time? I was saying the evening I'm done with my. Okay, so maybe six, six thirty. Yeah, six thirty. Okay, so what number can I reach you at? Seven two six zero. All right, great. So I'll set this up and I'll give you a call and let you know when we can get there for sure. Okay. And all right, great. I look forward to spending some time. Yeah, thanks so much. All right, good. Uh, Very good. Uh, thanks. Make sure you're right now. And I know I don't know. I'm show you this. I'm on, I need to do this in a real open house. I'm writing down everything they're saying on a sheet of paper. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, good. Agent, buyer. Hey, welcome in. I'm Xavier Yankee. Xavier, I'm Jason Fox. Nice to meet you, Jason. Nice to meet you. Hello, Brains Uh We were just out looking around for uh, potential uh, uh, new homes. So we have a house now. Uh, this one, uh, I think it's a bedroom on the main. It's kind of been some of our features that were looking for. Do you already know a little bit about the house? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah, well, we'll. Uh, I'm skipping ahead. I'm you sorry. are actually. <laughs> so this home, like you said, has the bedroom on the main. There's one bedroom on the main, two on the upstairs, two full baths, um, and a half bath as well down here. So, and it's offered at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. There's an open concept kitchen. One thing that you'll really like, or that the sellers love about this home, is the garage, fenced in backyard, and um, the new upgraded floors. Yeah, that sounds uh, fairly similar to what we're looking. Like, excellent. Well, why don't you take a look around and grab this questionnaire, fill that out so we can find some seller feedback, and then we'll chat when you're done. All right, thank you. Okay, look, look, look. Hey, Jason, what do you think? Yeah, I thought it was really good. Um, it is not quite as big as we were looking for, but okay. I do like the main, the mask on the main and the kitchen outside area. Um, so, yeah, we'll just kind of have to keep looking around. Yeah, so I'll, as well in this neighborhood, just so you're aware, we do that there are some other properties available right now. Just a little bit higher in price points. They're going to be getting bigger on square footage wise. Probably that might be pretty important to you. But there's actually one over on Elm Street, about a half a mile from here. It's 
350 square feet larger um, in its up to 75 compared to the 250, but a lot of the same great features, open concept, newly updated um, kitchen, and they actually have a brand new um, bathroom as well that was just redone. That's something that you might be interested in? Yeah, we're definitely interested. Okay, cool. Well, how about I go ahead and give them a call here in a few minutes and then see if I can get us in. Um, be able to look at that tonight or tomorrow? Yeah, I might be in the deep side. Okay, cool. Jason, what's the best number breaks you have? <laughs> awesome. I'm going to go see if I can get the schedule um, showing for us, and I'll shoot you a call as soon as I find out. Can't get in tonight. Will, will tomorrow work? Yes, it would. Awesome. And then what is your email address so I can send you the property as well? Awesome. Well, I'm going to make the call. I'll let you know as it's I look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Good. How did it feel? Good. Uh, it was a little thrown off because I prepared my own <laughs> But I liked that. So, like, I was kind of a, a proof that I could wing it and kind of go for it. You're, I, I still get, get thrown stuff. You know, you just be as good as you can be. Yeah. And I can guarantee you other agents are not doing this kind of stuff unless they've had this training. Yeah. Tucker agents, uh, do you have a realtor? I can show you any house in the MLS. Oh, big benefit to me. I'm sure nobody else could do that. You know, it felt yeah. very confident that I already have a backup plan. That way, not very that way. Oh, I said it was time to call tonight. It will go over what you're wanting. And I'll set you up in a property search. So I already, already asking and qualifying what you, what you want. And you've proven that, again, if you prove you have value, that's what I mean. Like you coming in and saying, hi, here's some information about the house. Do you have a realtor? Yeah. That doesn't prove value. It's WIFM, what's in it for me? That's the station buyers listen to. You've got to be able to give, and, and you all are doing great. All of you guys have done a great job. Um, but you're listening to them and you're showing you have product knowledge and that you have professionalism because nobody else is doing that. Good. Okay. Realtor buyer. <laughs> Hi, welcome to uh, our open house today. I'm Jason. What's your name? Rachel. Rachel Pearl. Pearl. Nice to meet you. Good. Um, <laughs> so the uh welcome to my open house this is a uh a four bedroom four bathroom uh, home built by estrich homes it's built in like 2019 uh, as you can see here the the master bedroom is here looking on the main floor a few more bedrooms upstairs does have a finished uh full basement full bedroom full bathroom downstairs uh it's got uh, plenty of open windows you can close those if you want to watch a movie uh, don't forget to look at the backyard, uh, fist in backyard, nice paper patio, fireplace. So um, take a look around, see see what you think. Uh, and if I could, uh, before you leave, if you check back in with me, I'd like you to fill out a questionnaire just for the, uh, the, the sellers to see what you like most about the house. Sounds great. The only thing you didn't tell her is price. That was uh, really good. Yes. We're being offered at. Okay. Yeah. So it's at Escher's home. It's a four bedroom, four bath. We're listing the price, the, the home at uh, 750000 Uh And if, uh, do you talk about pre approval? Is that like at the very end? Yeah, okay. later. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. take a look around and, uh, and tell me what you think. Look, look, look. Um, what do you think of the property? You had a chance to look around? Yeah, so we liked it. Um, I'm just gonna do again. We're hoping for some more, you know, property, maybe more land. Well, this um, this neighborhood is a dual neighborhood. It's got uh, mostly um, track homes, uh, but on the other side, we do have some custom homes with larger acreage as well. So, this home on a larger um, uh, acreage is that something you're looking for? Yeah, and we're flexible in price, and we don't have to pay for areas. Of the area, so. Yeah, so you're are you already pretty approved to invest in this uh, price point of home? We're paying cash. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I want to. Uh, um, I know there's some houses here in the neighborhood. Um, most of them on the uh, uh, larger acre side. Um, is there anything else that, if you had to dream out loud, that, that would qualify your home? Um, we love a swimming pool. Okay. Um, let me look around for uh, the properties here in the neighborhood. Uh, if you're free tonight, I'd give you. Uh, I'd like to to show you what we have available. Uh, can I uh, get a good number to to call you? Yeah. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to do some research. I'm going to give you uh, some feedback and uh, take a look at what's available. Um, could I show some of those houses to you tonight at six o'clock? Yeah, we don't have agents, so we'll work with them. Awesome. Um, can I also get your uh, email address? Yes. 
All right, thank you. So I'm gonna give you a call back here as soon as I can, uh, see what's available. See if we can get in there tonight around uh, six o'clock. And if not, can I show it to you tomorrow morning? Yes, absolutely. All right, thank you very much. Good. whole idea of like you're not just walking into a sheet of papers and mind blowing because you see that on everywhere TV, you, you know, see that at every open house you see why they buy that really is a help to you yeah. it helps them yeah. but you need to be the one telling that information because this is your window to show you're professional yeah and you have product knowledge yeah everybody passes out things i and a lot of people here are successful open houses pass out things i do not hmm. i don't I sold my first full year. I sold 34 houses and 33 from open houses. That's, you know, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. So I had to do that. Are you going to go? I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going then. You're the agent. You're the buyer. Hi, thank you for coming. My name is Rachel Earl. What is your name? Krishna. What's the last name? Turpin. Perfect. Hi. <laughs> so this house is around 2,000 square feet. It's not very bad, too bad. Um, we have all new floors, uh, luxury vinyl planks, so we're waterproof. Mm -hmm. um, the sellers also put in crown mold for the whole home oh, nice. and fully fenced in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And we have completely remodeled bathrooms and a full remodel of the kitchen for the appliances. Oh, nice. And we're listed at three bedrooms. Okay, how many bedrooms was it? Three bedrooms. Three bedrooms, two baths? Yes, oh, two full baths. Um, and then at the end, if you don't mind, we do want to get some information from the seller. So if you don't mind coming back and we'll chat a little bit, get your feedback. Okay, cool. Okay. Look, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about the home? Oh, it's a really beautiful home. I love all the new updates and finishes. We are looking for a four bedroom though. So that would be our home. Are you flexible on price at all? Uh, yes. Okay. Perfect. So there is a house, 123 Main Street, right now. I don't know if you saw it. It's currently active. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I'm not sure. So it's a little bit more on price. It's 375 mm -hmm. when this one's 350 Is that a price range for you? Um, If we like the house, we'll be able to be flexible, yeah. Perfect. And are you pre-approved? Yes, we are. Perfect. That's not great. Make the appointment or tell her about the house. Tell her about the house you're going to send her to. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, four beds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it does have an additional uh, bedroom. So it's mm -hmm. four beds. It's actually two and a half baths. So oh, you nice. get another half bath. It's a little larger. Okay. So, do you have time to go see it tonight or tomorrow? Uh, tonight works better. Second part. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, if you don't mind, um, give me just your, your name, number, email, and we can schedule something. Yeah, I'll hold it. Oh, well, thank you. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Okay. I'm the buyer, and you're the agent. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ding dong. Hi. Welcome in. We bring you out today. Oh, it's just a nice day. We thought we'd just go see what's available out here in the market. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, thanks for coming to my open house. Welcome in. It's a three bedroom, two bath, um, 1,200 square feet, all new flooring. They just completely redid the kitchen in both bathrooms upstairs. In the I'm going to tell you something. You do the same thing I do. You talk too fast. Slow down a little bit. You know, one of the things that I, when I used to do a lot, I, I was primarily a listing agent, but when I did like buyers and stuff and even listing appointments, I tend to talk fast, but it can be overwhelming for people to try to keep up with me. It's called matching and mirroring. Mm -hmm. I did this one time and I swear it felt like I was magic. I The whole day, whatever anybody gave to me, like if I was talking to Rachel and I'd say, yeah, I know what you mean. It happened to me too. Um, we kind of had that happen as well. You know, I would, I'm matching whatever she gives me. And if they're talking very quietly and very slow, it is extremely hard for me to talk like that. I'm galloping inside. But if I want her to relate to me, I'm going to have to give her what she is comfortable speaking at. I'm going to France and I'm speaking French. So if I, when I was meeting with clients, I consciously did that because I wanted them to feel comfortable. Uh -huh. I'm saving them from some really bad realtors that don't care about them. And if I don't do this, they might go work with X, Y, and Z. So I didn't want to have that happen. So I kept up with you fine because I speak very quickly and I'm a loud speaker. Mm -hmm. You slow it down a little bit. So I think I forgot that when I heard you, it's like, oh, she sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't do that open houses. 
So you said three bedrooms, three baths. Yes, this is a three bedroom, two bath. Um, the kitchen has been completely renovated along with the two bathrooms upstairs in the owner suite and the shared bathroom. Uh, there's a swimming pool within this neighborhood. I don't know if you have children, but it is an open swimming pool. Um, and it overlooks the pond in the backyard. Feel free to take a look around. Please stop by and see me and the kids. Oh, price point. <laughs> it is listed at three fifty. Okay. <laughs> so feel free to take a look around. I'll be in the kitchen hanging out. Please come back and see me. Give me some feedback and uh, okay. Look, look, look. What you think? It's nice. Yeah, just nice. What you like about it? Uh, I did like the pool in the back. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it is kind of open, but I'm looking for something bigger than this. It just feels too tight. Oh, it just feels too tight? Okay, as far as floor plan, bedroom size. What do you, does it, do, would you think that would be? Yeah. Yeah. It would be hard. You don't want people to not work with you because they, they can't keep up with you. Okay. I understand your fan. I, 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 it doesn't yeah. sound professional either way, but... Uh, you did good at the first, but you did the first one perfect. And I'm in my flow. Yes. Um, I know. Yes, all the flow. Hot in here. Yes, it is. When I walk back in, it's like. Yeah, it's his room always is that way. Okay. Is it just the square footage that's too small? Is it the room size, the floor plan concept? What is it? It's the square footage, and the master feels small to me. I want something with a bigger. We have a king size bed, and we got all our furniture from Europe, so it's very large. And I, it's just too small. Oh, I completely understand. Well, I did go and um, have a showing earlier this week with another client at a home. I think will fit your needs that you're looking for. Really? Um, it is about 10 minutes away from here. Are you partial to this neighborhood or are you open to exploring outside? I'm neighborhood? open. Oh, you're open? Okay, awesome. So again, it's about 10 minutes from here. It is a little bit bigger, bigger in square footage wise. And I think it's going to give that master bedroom a bigger feel too as well. Um, this, I am done with this in about 30 minutes. I can meet you there in 40. Are you available within the next 40 minutes to an hour? Yeah, I am. Okay, well, here's the address and here's the BLC sheet too for that. Just a little bit of information on the house that I'm not supposed to be giving out. Don't give them anything. I know. Back outside <laughs> part. I know. They, it is. Everybody, realtors are just like, any other company yeah. here kill more sheet. trees than here. Me. yeah here here give me a sheet give me a sheet i did too and someone taught me and well here's the address i'll go ahead and text that to you what's your phone number Bubble two one three three two seven eight. okay awesome well i will get that over to you i'll meet you there in about an hour give you a walk through and we can kind of go from there you work have you gone through the approval process already yes we have you have okay what's it will be you don't mind me asking five million let me check this out. We're approved up to 400,000. Yeah, awesome. Well, if you want to go take a coffee break, I'll totally get that for you and I'll meet you at the house in the next 40 minutes. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Thanks. The only, it was good. Slow it down a little bit. And then um, the other thing I would say is you didn't, you didn't whet my appetite quite enough. You said it was like this. I would have liked to heard a little bit more about the house that. It's going to. Okay. But otherwise, it's good. I have a question. You didn't critique me. <laughs> oh, you did great. Did you miss anything? No, I don't think so. You, the price, you correct on the price, I think. Is that it? Okay. Um, uh, the, on the, I stop doing that. That's why I came to this. I, I, honestly, I, I think y'all all did well. All of you guys did well. Miss had a good teacher. <laughs> just kidding just kidding but no hand no point i don't hand him anything I, guy who used to be in our office i love him jonathan erickson he's at set the beast he took this class he goes can i give him a picture of the house i gotta give him something i said no you don't don't hand him anything and he was like i can't do this i gotta hand him something i've got to do it and he came up and he goes okay it works <laughs> it's we're so used to handing him stuff but I don't think it helps you. Do you think they want anything unless they see it really sitting there? I feel like a lot of people, they come in and they like do that scan and then there's paper and cars and everything sitting there like, oh, can I take one of these? I guess if it's not there, there's no like want for it. You know what I mean? You're meeting you can put forward. stuff down there if you want to, but I'm I'm more concerned with you guys getting business. Oh, I'd rather not. But I mean, like I, I, they're not there. I feel like that's really you good. can have a stack of your business cards and the and the, the open house sheet they can fill out. The other thing is, you said I'll be you or somebody said I'll go. Sit, I'll be in the kitchen. You said I'll be in the kitchen. 
I people don't like to fill out forms sometimes. So I kind of hang out by the front door, maybe not right next to it, but by the dining room. And they start, I could tell they come downstairs and they're trying to walk to the door. I said, so what'd you think? <laughs> she got a chance to fill out a question. Oh, we didn't. I said, oh, just take a second. I said, don't, don't mess with me. <laughs> I showed you around it. You're going to fill out the questionnaire by gum, by golly. And it, and it really is, if especially if it's my listing, I, I want the sellers to know. And, and any seller wants to know if they're leaving their house, they want to know, they want feedback. They want to know what people think of their house. And you're not going to get everybody, but could you get one or two? Would it be even better? So any questions or any ahas about that before we go on? We've just got a little bit more to do. I wish you'd been there two weekends ago when I did my side thing. But did you battle somebody? I did two, I did one last weekend and then two this weekend. I wanted to be uncomfortable. I knew I was going to be uncomfortable even if I knew what I was doing. But good for you. Yeah. Good for you. That's that's the way to get good. Put yourself out there. I I drive by the first open house I did. It's on Carmel Drive, and I I live like close to um, Woodbrook uh, Mohawk Hills Elementary. It's right there, and it has a circular driveway. And I will never. I had a suit on, a business suit. Okay. And hose and everything. And I never wear hose. And I made cookies and I had lemonade and I had a chest with ice in it and everything. And I did all of this and I had signs and I had all my flyers and nobody came. It's like, this is a bad omen. Things are not going to go well. You know, and I'm, I'm really glad the Lord led me to something else different. But, um, you know, sometimes open houses are great and sometimes they're not. But to, if you do what four of these a week, you should get at least, at least one client out of it. And if that's a, $200,000 house, that's probably $3,000 in your pocket right. by the time you pay stuff. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, and, and, the, and then really the other thing is too, and you guys are all did really well at this is listen, listen to what people say. And um, I had one guy said, he said, they was this and this, and I said, okay, um, I can find that for you. He goes, are you really going to get back with me? I've talked to three real estate companies until, and this was, 20 years ago, he bought a $350,000 house, which was high at that point. I said, oh, you will be hearing from me before the end of the day. And I did. And I sold him a house. So any other questions, Ahas? I have a question. Um, could you briefly, I'm super new, so forgive me if this is a no question. No problem. Could you revisit how you get open houses? Like how do you, I mean, if you're like. If you're new, yeah. go ask, go ask some agents or put something on the KW Future Millionaires page in Facebook. Put new agent looking for a good open house, preferably two to three fifty. Yeah, and but you're doing open houses for other people's listings, but you're going in and hosting and, it and, and getting leads and whatever on their listing. Yeah, but they—that's your business. It's not their business. Yeah, that's why I take all of their. If they have flyers sitting out, like color flyers for people to take, I put them up okay. because you're doing the open house for you. And and if you were holding my house open, I would say put my stuff up. I think any agent in the office would because the experienced okay. agents know that this is for you. You just need to remember to take the flyers out when you yeah. leave. Okay, thanks. And it's also exposure on more things of sellers. Are right, I mean, you're showing people yeah. their listing. That seems pretty great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They want, they want, most sellers want open houses. Yeah. So. No, we're talking about like sort of entry level price point. So your house isn't going to be super cute. But what are your thoughts about two agents showing the property just kind of being there um for a big hat like a million dollars that I, I went to one uh this past year and it was a uh, it was a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar lake house and i had an agent on the the first floor i was just there to to preview an agent on the first floor and one on the bottom i thought that's pretty cool that's you can do that i hadn't run across that in an office like this like if some but who's going to get the business then I think for experience wise too, like you're you're there, you're not by yourself. Um, the other thing you could do, you will find in open houses, lenders will come and corner you in the open houses and they'll sit and talk to you. They're trying to build rapport and they know you can't leave. <laughs> you, have you had that happen? <laughs> You're hot, you are hostage you then. It's like, okay, I've heard enough about you. Great, great, great. Uh, so I don't know. You could have a lender. I was saying you can have a lender go with you, but you don't want it to be about the lender and not about you. I, I, I probably wouldn't. Mm -hmm. If you wanted somebody to go with you, 
Uh, I, I build houses too. I design and build houses and I built one and sold in Fountain Square. And I took my husband with me. He went with me upstairs just because he said, you want to go see the house. It's all staged now. And he sat upstairs and he just sat there. He didn't do anything, but it was nice to have him there just in case, you know. I probably, you could do two agents, but my question is then, who gets the business? The person who greets them and, and if they do it right, they're the ones getting the business. What's in it for the other agent? Unless you guys trade it off. Okay, so that's that's how you do, I think, an effective open house. The next part is where you don't need to fall down on this because you need to follow up. So what you've done is you've connected with them and you're looking for, we're going to go straight for an appointment, which would, that's what I was trying to do, get an appointment to show them the house. So if they don't want to look at it, what you're going to have to do is stay in touch with them, get their email and email them things. Like if they tell you a little bit about what they're wanting to do, hi, I put you on my Insta buyer notification program, blah, 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 and then send it to them and then call them maybe once a week or so. You don't, especially if they have, if someone says, we're relocating here and we're trying to get in before the school year, I'm going to be on right next to them. We're going to be living together because they're A buyers. They have a timeline. They have to be here. Uh, I have one that came and said, oh, we just like to look at open houses. We found the right thing. We'll, we'll, we'll buy something. So how long have you been looking? Two years? No, thank you. I don't want to be your realtor. You're going to waste my time. So um, get an appointment. And you. But number one is you enter the prospect, prospect into your database. This will be under your have mets. And you can put open house at 1234 Main. I would also... On that piece of paper that I have, and I will show that to you, I write notes on the back of it, of a piece of paper that I will have them sign in on, and um, or I'll attach it to whatever. So I have, I keep all their contact information together. At any appointments you've had, tag your prospects, like open house buyer, A buyer, B buyer, meaning we have to move in the next year. You know, I would prioritize things a little bit according, but don't lose contact with them. They need to hear from you minimum once a week. And then a touch campaign. A touch, have you heard about that? I don't know where you are. Okay. And then, or smart plan to make sure you stay on top of mind and convert them. You make an appointment. They're active buyers. You write an offer and then you close. Okay. Best practices. Host a speaker. I have never seen that in this marketplace. Never once. Not ever. I don't think people come to open houses. I think they come to look at a house. They don't come to listen to somebody. Do you guys think? I've never seen anybody do it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of silly. Get the house in showing shape. That's why my kit has like, you never know, especially if it's not your listing, you don't know what you're going to walk into. So you don't want to have, you get there a, a half an hour early, you open every blind, you open every curtain, you turn on every light, you make the house bright, and then you start looking what looks bad. You may have to be house cleaner for a little bit. And that's just part of it. And then go live. Oh, here we are. I knew there was a list. You know, disinfecting wipes, toilet paper. That's a good one. I, paper towels, uh, pens, your business cards, you know, extra business cards, air freshener. I would not get pino pine or something like that. There's some that like uh, oust. It just takes away bad odors, but it doesn't leave another odor. You know what I'm saying? It's a takes it away. Back, battery backup or power for your phone is a good one. I don't think you need a measuring tape because the measurement should be on the BLC sheet. You should have the BLC for the house you're holding open. You should have that. Don't give it away, but it should be there. Trash bags and tissues. I guess somebody starts crying because they love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just lovely. Okay. So lead generation is this is prospecting and marketing. You are going after people that you don't know. Once you capture them, you turn them into a lead meaning you know a little bit about what's going on with their needs real estate wise and you and a contact that's where you put them on the drip campaign and then you start cultivating you follow up with appointments showing them houses staying with them getting into a lender by the way let's do a, let's do a, a quick thing have you been pre-qualified but i i'm asking you as a buyer have you been pre-qualified by a lender Say no. no. Even quote, no. Okay. Great. Well, let me just tell you a little bit about it. It's not that hard. You can do it in like in 10 and 15 minutes because I don't get involved in your finances, but a lender is going to look at what your debts are. 
and what your income is. And they're going to say, based on this, you're qualified for X amount of mortgage. You can, may go up to that and you may not want to be that much, but it'll give you an idea of what you can apply for. Now, I don't make any money off giving you references, but like we have, I have two really good lenders. They've been in business a long time. They know what they're doing. And I know if they say you're approved, you're going to close. Um, would you be offended? Uh, who's going to say, yeah, I'd be offended. Would you be offended if I shared their names with you? You can even call them um, like Mark Kuchik. He'll do it on Sunday. He's just going to ask you a thing and he'll, t- he'll say, based on this, you're qualified at something. At least that way, you know what your buying power is and given that and guessing at taxes, what your payment would be. You think that would be helpful to you? Yeah. I wanted to say yes. I'm nodding my head and I'll pee, right? Got it? Okay. Uh, that's if someone says, no, they haven't. That's why I just tell, I just turn into a teacher. You're educating. Okay. Uh, this is getting really hot. This is our last page. How has this change your thinking changed as a result of this class? Has it changed? Yes. yes. Good. Yes, absolutely. I, like I said, I wish that I had known you could just have this, but I first three. It would have made one just me feel a little more secure and not just running around like a little bit. Yes. That trial and error, though. I've been doing it and for it like is. a year. And I, and I'm I fine with that. Like, oh. Right. I'm fine with that. And I, I know that a lot of things I'm not going to have questions on until they obviously are in high school situation. But at least having a little bit going in, a little bit of a security, knowing that, okay, well, what I'm trying is not working. I can always call back to just, well, there's this, and there's this, just to keep something going. I would try this first, honestly. No, no yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, like, if, like, People are coming in, they're like, yeah, no, whatever. And you have to kind of like read that energy of, okay, well, I got to kind of work around you and implement this. And it's going to be a spiky situation, blabbing. But um, no, that's okay. Really and you, huh? <laughs> 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 you're just but, but I mean, like the amount of people that came in for my one on Sunday, it, I would have hoped, I mean, everybody had a major representation, they were locked into that. but. Uh, Maybe the people who had just met their agent, had I been able to do something like this, that may have secured it. If you show product knowledge and you show your professionalism, they'll give you your information and they'll work with you if they're not tied into somebody. I was going to tell you too, don't feel bad about saying, you know what, I'm not sure about that, but I will have the answer for you by tonight. It's not okay to say something. And then whatever you say you're going to do, do it. I always use the managing burger part. Let me check in the managing burger. That's a great, great one. It looks like it's somebody else's. Decision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you feel differently about? What was meaningful to you today? Um, realizing that you have to do the work, not just for the house, but for the surrounding houses in the neighborhood too. So you can have somewhere to pivot in that conversation. Well, I'm not interested in this. Let me pull out my ninja That's a good covers. word, pivot. I like that. What about you, Rachel? For me, I think I need to change how I look at neighborhoods because there's nothing more embarrassing when someone's like, oh, so-and-so neighborhood. And I'm like, which one is that? You know, so I feel like I need to educate myself there on okay. learning, like all the different areas. But like she said, like the surrounding Jason? I'm not very good at remembering like neighborhoods and streets. So I think like putting the legwork that week, like even printing out a map for streets, because if you're getting anybody from that neighborhood, they're like, Yeah, I'm on Elm Street, you're like it's me to think, but if you have already thought about that. Uh so working the neighborhood prior to that that listing before you're Rushing around to get the signs and everything better. So, um, twofold, like, I think this is just a Keller Williams thing, but like, let me let me get that information for you. And are you available today or tomorrow? Like, it's pretty impactful. Um, I think, like, your mindset of like everybody's already got an agent, I think I've probably had that for the longest time. It's probably not true, but if you're like, you're not really stepping on toes if you say, can I show you this house tonight or tomorrow? Would you be interested in that? Uh, yeah, and don't ever ask if they have an agent. Yeah. Don't ever ask them. I avoided that, I think, just because mm-hmm. I didn't know. But, yeah. you know, I just kind of... Well, and it's a blow-off, too. Right. But it's I a blow-off. Oh, yeah, I've got an agent. Yeah, yeah. Because, again, their mindset is not necessarily you're going to pester them or you're going to do something to them. I, we're not high on the trust standard. Yeah. Some, not by everybody, but on some. Enjoy. I thought this was amazing. Like, I am super encouraged because this is exactly how I would do a thing. This resonates to me hard. Like, good. super good. And I have a, a degree in graphic design and, and marketing. They talk about creating resonance 
This is exactly what you're doing. It's brilliant. Like if you, in order for people to want to come back to you for some reason as opposed to someone else, you have to resonate somehow. So your questions are creating that with people. You're they're going to remember you because they've cre you've created resonance, and now they they're relaxed and they feel like they know you, and you go back. That's why anybody shops for who they do or they buy lays and not ruffles or it's because that something created resonance their grandpa had them i don't know yeah. but, you know and so you keep going back it's i think this approach is amazing so good. thanks I appreciate it. no i'm happy good Helen? Well, yeah we think that was how i feel i i really appreciate this and this was beyond helpful especially since good. that's really what i'm focusing on now to grow even just myself is taking open houses and just putting myself out there and also just getting the opportunity to see different style of homes familiar with myself with you know this this concept and this is a style and this because i i know that i don't know all that yet and then also previewing i seeing what's around and being able to not only let people subtly know that the one that you're in this is this is the one this one's great this one has the top notch compared to you know Three, four streets over. You know, it's a little more dated. Just being able to, even if I don't share that, having that knowledge, knowing and finding a way to Do utilize you tour that. Home by your own too? What's that? Do you tour home by yourself instead of like going with the client? Do you just go and do home previewing? Home? Is that previewing? Previewing? So yeah, no, I, I'm not. I definitely yeah. will. I mean, I, I can even know that was a thing. Just to learn like the open floor plan, the concept, right. the flooring, and that's That's what I do. I just go to her house by myself. I think that's the thing. Is I like being so new. I don't know what I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know the things that are at my exposure. Just go see a house. Well, oh, great. Then I'm going to go see houses all week. You know what I mean? I, I don't know any of that. And how do I do now? <laughs> you know, the other thing too, about if you know it's in the neighborhood, people will say, I saw a house, especially if it's on the, on the drive into your house. What about that house that was listed at the front of the subdivision? I've seen that house. Do you know what? It's different than this one. And you can start talking about it. You know, and, and maybe when you and like when you preview, you write a whole bunch of stuff on it, but you only you highlight three things that make it special or something. Mm -hmm. So some said, I want a fenced yard. That may be what you highlighted for this other house. Mm -hmm. And it's it's showing professionalism. Again, a lot of agents don't do any of this. They don't do any legwork and they show up Sunday and expect to get business. And it's just they might get lucky and do it occasionally. But I want you guys to get lucky a lot. Amen, sister. You know, I want you to, I want you to make, I want you guys to make lots of money and be very, very successful. And I, and I hope this will help you. I think it will. It helps me again. Other people don't do things differently, but I built my career on open houses because I knew nobody. I had to find a way in. And this is what I did. And not until somebody told me this is the way I didn't, wasn't successful until I did this. So awesome. Godspeed. I'm, um, see, my, my little people because over there I don't like I said I'm basically an investor now I don't do much sales I, I like I said after I sold a thousand property my thousand home I thought oh, I'm kind of getting tired of this but um <laughs> yeah it's pretty fantastic well and I've got rental properties that I paid off early so that's really nice to be able to have that income so and I build I, I design and build houses so um but I'm happy to help you if any time because I hope my own house is open you know, and I, it's a great way to get business. My phone number is easy. It's, you can remember my phone number is two plus one equals three fast. Two, one, three, F-A-S-T. That's my maiden name. Two plus one equals three fast. Can you remember that? If you have questions or something, call me. I'm happy to help you. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, no, I'm happy to. And I wish you the very, very, very best of luck. Is there any, anything else anybody wants to add or say or anything? Awesome. Just really appreciate this. I really, this is amazing. I really appreciate confidence this Good, good. And you know what? The more you do it, the more it'll be easy. You'll just get it. Yeah. You will. And all of you guys did well. I, I mean, most newer agents stumble more than you guys have. So that's good. Yes. And, it's, and don't beat yourself up if you do, or if you forget to say something, just go for the previewing. And have you seen this house? You know what? I showed this house. And you can point at it and talk to it, and you can be reading what it says while you're talking. And if you forget or have your notes, so Godspeed. Good luck, everybody. Awesome. My pleasure. How to keep this good next time.
Or did you? If somebody had a rapport with, I'd follow up that night. And then, like, how consistently, like, because I have people, and then I found out later that every week, unless until I said, until they told me a couple of times, we're not ready to do anything just yet. Because there's a saying, and I think it's true buyers are liars. They don't mean to lie. But my first house I bought, I was not an agent, and I told them we had to have a four bedroom, and we had to have something else, and we got a three bedroom. Oh, in a formal dining room with no dining room. It's really what I thought I wanted. But buying a house is an emotional decision. When you walk in and you see something, you go, oh, this is what I want. Yeah. It, you got to keep in touch with them because, it, you know, it, there's a fine line between har harassing them. and But I think once a, a week, like maybe you call them on Monday and maybe you text them on Friday. Hey, um, I sent you things. Is there anything you want to look at over the weekend? And just be helpful. Look for a reason to contact them. You ask about taxes, here is something on the tax base in Carmel. You look for reasons to give them something of value. It may be neighborhood information. It may be, I don't know, whatever. Here's lender information. But I would I would try to keep, unless they're saying we're not moving for six months, I would do like every eight weeks, but then I put a tickler on my file. Like two months, I start reaching them every month and then every two weeks and every week. Okay. It's changed the game. I feel like. Good, good, good. I hope so. I hope it changed it big time. Maybe you do it first next, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, right right now. Now. She's good. Don't worry, Nikki. Oh, I okay. I don't know. Yes, I know it's it's stuffy, isn't it? Well, it's for Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're using the chat about. Um, <laughs>